Severe storms fire up over the plains. This funnel cloud spotted southwest of Houston earlier today. Doesn't look like it reaches all the way to the ground from this vantage point, so not a tornado at this point. But certainly, these storms are capable of producing some of these dangerous elements, these tornadoes. Now, that same line of storms pushing from the plains into the Mississippi River Valley from Dallas to Arkansas, north even to St. Louis. We're watching for heavy rain, damaging winds, hail, and the threat for dangerous nighttime tornadoes. So let's get right to it with the latest. There are a lot of warnings out there. So we're going to go into the lab with storm specialist Carl Parker. Hey, Carl. Hey, Chris. Uh, awful lot to tell you about tonight. And there are some tornado warnings now in southern Missouri. So we're going to begin with that. We've got a very energetic atmosphere, a lot of what we call convective available potential energy, a lot of fuel for these thunderstorms. So they're going to be going all night long. You see the big, long line of storms now from Illinois all the way down through Oklahoma. That's going to continue to roll across parts of Arkansas uh, deep into the evening. And tornado warnings, as I mentioned, uh, east now of Springfield. A couple to tell you about. One that is ongoing for Douglas County until 815. And then the newest of them to the north here, that is for Wright County. And that is going until 830. Now, as we look at these returns here, I want you to notice the little kinks. So you've got a, a line right through there of very strong winds. But there are kinks that have developed in several areas. There's one there. There's one there. There's a larger one right there and another one right in there. So in each of those areas, there is potential for a tornado. Let's first of all go to the north here and track these two out. Uh, that's a pretty tight little area of spin. That is coming towards Hartville right now. It's going to be in Hartville probably at about 8.05, so not very long from now at all. It's just, just about on top of you. And then you've got this one to the south as well. Uh, not as pronounced, but uh, potential for a tornado there. And that is going to be coming towards Crossroads Store. I'm going to circle this very quickly. Let's see if there's any evidence of debris at this time. Uh, I'm not seeing anything that is clear cut there, but certainly you've got a pretty tight little rotation showing up in that area. So head up, heads up in Hartville as you've got a possible tornado coming your way. Uh, then as we go farther south, again, you've got this broader rotation. It's not real tight right now, but that's a, a pretty sizable area of strong wind that is surging forward. So there is certainly potential for not just a tornado, but a very strong straight line wind. That's just about on top of you in Basher, and it's going to be coming towards Denlo uh, beyond that. And then one more of these little kinks now coming towards Route 5, and that's going to be moving towards Evans and also towards Gurney. Gardner as well. Uh, stepping this back just a little bit, motion appears to be basically uh, to the east, maybe just a little bit north of east. So uh, these are going to be quick spin ups generally. They're not going to be long lasting spin ups, uh, but rather quick ones. Uh, and we'll have more on this threat uh, coming up here in just a moment. We'll go through some of those severe thunderstorm warnings as well. Chris, back to you. Hey, Carl, we want to get right to meteorologist Mike Seidel, who is live in the thick of things right now. Hey, Mike. Hey, Chris, we're in Fayetteville, just on the southwest side of town, and the, the squall line just rolled through here about three minutes ago. Uh, we were dead calm, and then the winds just come whistling over the hills here in the Ozarks, and now we've got wind and rain. Look at the, look at the visual here. This is like a tropical storm now here across this parking lot uh, right off I-49. Uh, a little bit of lightning flashing around the area, but not the bolts that were close by about 10, 15 minutes ago, but tremendous amounts of rain, and we'll likely pick up uh, about three quarters to an inch of rain, but this is moving at about 50 miles an hour, moving very, very fast through northwest Arkansas. The warning goes until 8.30 uh, here in the Fayetteville area and areas around uh, the Fayetteville area. Many counties under warnings, that bolt was back that way, so that's already moved. That cell or that uh, bolt of lightning is already off to our uh, south and east, but just plenty of rain and wind. The winds gusted, I think, earlier about 40 miles an hour. Right now, gusting 25 to 30 miles an hour. Haven't seen any tree limbs or any uh, debris blown around, but just uh, the wind just, boy, it just came out of nowhere. We knew it was coming because we've been following it on the radar for uh, all afternoon and evening, and we've seen gusts 
upwards of 60 plus miles an hour uh, in Springfield and also in Joplin up in Missouri, where they've had last check about eight or nine thousand power outages. Uh, Louisiana's had the most so far, about 18,000. Now the wind has backed off, still some very heavy rainfall, and you can see the water rushing down the drain. So, uh, Chris, uh, a quick hitter. We knew it was coming. Everybody's hunkered down, and hopefully we won't have a tremendous amount of power outages. But one thing that's happened uh, is the power. Did the power just go out here? No, I think the parking lot lights just went out here in the parking lot. Otherwise, the power is on. The other thing I've noticed, Carl, is the temperature has dropped uh, remarkably here in about 15 minutes, probably about 10, 12, 13 degrees. All right, Mike, thank you so much. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the radar perspective and show you the storm that Mike has been watching. This is it coming right across 49 right now. Benton, Madison, Washington counties under warning until 830. And we're looking at a threat for some damaging wind that is now coming through Fayetteville, where Mike is located. Also on the way for Fort Smith, there's a warning to the south as well. And looking at Haskell, LaFleur, and Sequoia counties under warning for potential damaging wind and large hail. Let's time that for forward as that moves uh, to the south of east it's going to be coming in into some even greater instability. Grady and Stevens County under warning for not just wind, but possibly some two inch hail that is larger than golf ball size hail possible with that cell. Also a new warning here uh, for a cell just off of the West Cotton, Jefferson and Stevens County. Again, very large hail a possibility. Uh, then as we get up into Illinois, we're seeing some warnings now southwest of Champaign and Urbana, primarily for wind and then a line of storms with a good bit of lightning, but no warnings right now. Uh, uh, coming into St. Louis and uh, towards that 55 corridor. So looking at the watches here, there is a tornado watch in eastern parts of Oklahoma, northern parts of Arkansas, northwest Arkansas. All the rest of the watches are severe thunderstorm watches, so more of a damaging wind and hail threat, but some possibility for tornadoes as well. The newest of them issued for much of Arkansas going until 3 o'clock in the morning. So this is what I mean by there being a lot of instability, a lot of fuel available for these storms and this is a way of looking at that uh, this is a measure of that instability and where you see the red color there there's enough certainly to support severe storms you get into the orange you're getting into a higher more moderate range but when you get into that yellow and almost whitish color you're talking about really high even extreme instability and that means you're going to get very powerful updrafts and storms that last for a long period of time. And as more of these storms in Oklahoma begin to congeal and turn into a line, an unbroken line of storms, a really significant damaging wind threat is going to drive down through southeast Oklahoma, eventually down into the Metroplex as well. Uh, that's going to be later tonight and all across the state of Arkansas. So uh, here's one model interpretation of that, uh, showing you how this may go down. And again, you see how we've got more of an unbroken line of really vigorous storms late tonight. That's 11 o'clock central time. So coming down across the Red River there, starting to get into the Metroplex. Along the tail end here, we do see some more discrete cell structures. So we're going to be a little more concerned about these supercells that could produce very large hail and possibly tornadoes in addition to a damaging wind threat. And then we'll watch that continue to drive down across the Metroplex getting into the Arklatex there as well about one o'clock in the morning still coming through the south side of Dallas Fort Worth a larger metro and then you see these little Boeing segments uh, developing in parts of Arkansas and with those we've got an ongoing wind threat now with all that instability still being in place, uh, these storms are still going to be going strong, uh, even into the overnight hours. Here we're looking at 4 o'clock in the morning, and we've still got very strong line segments and lines of storms uh, coming down into the Houston metro area. It could be a really noisy start for you. Certainly a lot of damaging wind potential, maybe some tornadoes, and again, hail and a lot of heavy rain. Uh, that will continue to drive down to the Gulf Coast by the time we get into the early morning hours, largely pushing off sure as the sun is coming up and some stronger storms coming through New Orleans as well. So Chris, a lot of people being affected by this, a lot of real estate being covered by this potential severe weather over the next several hours here. 
All right, Carl, and uh, over the next uh, four hours, we'll be working together. I'm going to have some questions. I want to pick your brain about a few things here, Carl, uh, uh, including, you know, what, uh, you know, is con concerning you the most about this, what uh, could possibly put, uh, kill or dampen some of these storms, if that's even a possibility. So, Carl, we're going to have a lot to go over during the next four hours, but right now, one of the spots we're going to be going over is Memphis. 67 degrees right now. You can see some of the wet roads. And what's so important with this, of course, if you are up watching us now and again here at the Weather Channel, we're going to be with you, taking you through these storms. Uh, Carl and I together for the next four hours. And as we do, timing is such an important thing. You got to know when we can uh, finally you know, take a, a little breath. I know it can be very anxious as you're waiting for these storms to come through. And you're still going to be waiting uh, in Memphis around midnight. So make sure if you're going to sleep that you have a way to be woken up if there is a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning for your area because by 1 o'clock in the morning there could be these storms coming through. And if you do have a warning, you need to make sure the family's safe, all in a safe location here, whether it's severe thunderstorm warning or if it's a tornado warning. Through the morning hours, uh, a few uh, leftover showers with some of the strongest storms from Memphis around midnight or later. Here's Dallas. Carl was showing us uh, just a few moments ago. But again, now a closer look at this. And this is it gives you a general idea of the flavor of the atmosphere, some strong storms, possibly some large hail out of this. And you can kind of see how it's broken here where there's some strong storms over here and some over here. That's not a guarantee. There's going to be some storms around and the potential for some of the big ones to come through with some very large hail is definitely there by midnight. Here's one o'clock in the morning now coming through Dallas. So between 11 and 1, we're really going to be watching these storms here as they're approaching and then moving through the Dallas Fort Worth area here and then again drifting off to the south. Now here we go into the Arklatex. Uh, we have Arkansas, we have Louisiana, and we have Texas and the Red River Valley through here. Shreveport and Bossier City, 9 o'clock this evening. Here comes the storms. Here's 11. Here's midnight now. Cruising through Texarkana, crashing a little bit farther to the south. Shreveport, Bossier City, uh, it's going to be heading your way, possibly not until 1 or 2 in the morning and lasting maybe until 3 or 4. So somewhere in that range. So, Carl, for a lot of people, this is an overnight thing, likely going to be sleepless nights for many people, both out of anxiety and just the storms themselves come roaring in with the wind and the rain and some large hail. We've seen some large hail this week in Shreveport and Bossier City already. Yeah, good night to uh, leave those phones on and by the bed, that's for sure. And we want to get you up to date on these tornado warnings now that are in effect in southern parts parts of Missouri. A whole series of them uh, ongoing now. This is well east of Springfield. The newest warning for Douglas County that's going until 830. Also a tornado warning to the north of that and uh, that is now for Wright County also going until 830. And so what we're looking at here is a line of storms, a big push of very strong wind and little kinks that have developed right along the leading edge. And so we see one uh, near Hartville. It's not quite as pronounced as it was moments ago and these do tend to be a little more transient in nature. Uh, let's go ahead and track that forward, see where it's going to be headed in the next few minutes here. Uh, that coming towards Crossroads Store. Also a larger circulation, very broad circulation coming towards Cold Spring and coming towards Ann. But, you know, another thing that really stands out here, and there is, by the way, a downstream, much larger severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, that in effect for 70 mile per hour wind. And we're really seeing some tremendous wind showing up up here in the velocity data. This is uh, off the ground by several thousand feet, but that's 86 miles per hour that is showing up there aloft. And so a lot of that is going to be transferred down to the ground, and that's going to result in some very strong winds, uh, hence the warning for 70 mile per hour wind across a huge area in southern Missouri. We want to go now to uh, Fayetteville. That's where meteorologist Mike Seidel is. And uh, Mike just got blasted by storms and uh, a good bit cooler right now. It is uh, down in the low 60s. It was in the mid 70s earlier. And as quickly as it came in, it's now basically moved south and east of us. Look at the radar, the brighter colors, reds and oranges, now south and east at Fayetteville. We're on the southwest side of the city. So there's still lightning in the distance. There's still some, there's a uh, flash that's probably about five or six miles away. The rain has lightened up, but we got a really good downpour. And, and that was cloud to cloud lightning. I've seen some of that just. Um, uh, flashes arcing in the sky. I remember driving one night years ago back from Midland, Odessa, out there in West Texas, and you know, 
cloud to cloud lightning the whole way. And I'm seeing some of that right now. This uh, uh, atmosphere is really energized. But again, the severe threat has uh, ended here where we are on this side of Fayetteville. The warning goes until the bottom of the hour, and then the rain will last maybe till about 9 o'clock, and that'll be it. So uh, we've done okay. We'll keep an eye on power outages and see if there's any damage reports. But we've done pretty uh, well in Oklahoma, uh, Carl, and Kansas as far as damage reports, considering what we were thinking how bad it could be with a, a squall line and potential derecho. No doubt, Mike. Uh, thank you so much. And we're going to have uh, much more on all of this uh, going through the night tonight. Let's go ahead and get you up to date once again on where some of the more severe storms are right now. And you've got a big, long line of storms now extending through parts of Missouri, uh, just getting into northwest Arkansas and coming down into Oklahoma as well. The, the vast majority of what we're looking at is a damaging wind threat right now. And that's mostly what we're going to be looking at through the night tonight. But there will be some areas where we'll be concerned about supercells, very large hail as a possibility especially more towards the southern end of that line. So Oklahoma and getting into Dallas. And right now, some tornado warnings to tell you about in southern parts of Missouri. A tornado warning for Douglas County. Also a tornado warning to the north of that for Wright County. But a much larger damaging wind threat, 70 mile per hour wind uh, now racing off of the east. We'll have much more on this coming up in a few minutes. This is a second counts. Deadline to Disaster premieres Sunday night on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 64 degrees with rainy conditions. Tonight, thunderstorms, low 53, winds south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday, rain, high 57, rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Wednesday night, rain, low 40, chance of rain 80%, rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back to our coverage of what is going to be a very busy night of severe weather. All hazards tonight. We're talking about damaging wind, very large hail, and also tornadoes. And right now we do have some tornado warnings to tell you about in southern Missouri. You see the big unbroken line of storms there from Illinois all the way into Oklahoma. It'll be going for quite some time tonight, uh, all the way until the sun comes up for parts of Texas and Louisiana. And here are the tornado warnings in southern Missouri. Uh, first of all, we've got a tornado warning in effect for Douglas County. That is going until 830 and then to the north of that another tornado warning in effect for Wright County also going until 830 and then a larger damaging wind threat associated with this uh, big bow echo here. Now, if you look closely, you see there are little kinks and these things do tend to be a little bit more transient in nature. There's one right in there. I'm actually going to uh, put a little bit of a circulation on here so you can get a sense of what the radar is showing us. So that area where you've got a little bit of red and yellow surging forward and then the dark darker grayish color right there. Uh, there's a little circulation right there and then arguably you've got some other little circulations farther south. They're not really as pronounced uh, as the one that is near Mountain Grove. So I think at least for the time being, at least for right now, maybe a little bit less of a tornado threat to the south. But that's the nature of these things. They tend to be very transient in nature. You see it sort of tighten up for a second, maybe a scan or two, and then it begins to relax and then it might happen again. Uh, so we've got a positive Possible tornado coming towards Dunn and also coming towards Cass. Uh, then to the south of that, as I mentioned, you've got an area of damaging wind and a whole series of circulations that are along this, but none of them that look really, really profound to me, but there certainly is a very serious damaging wind threat. Uh, that's going to be moving into Blanche uh, right now, into Ann, coming towards Bird Springs and Willow Springs as well. 70 mile per hour wind is the threat with these storms as they move along to the east. Now, as we take you farther south, got storms out now in the parts of northwest Arkansas as well as Oklahoma. A big bow echo that came through Fayetteville, an ongoing warning for Benton, Madison, Washington counties, and then to the south 
south of that, uh, warning here for Fort Smith, a brand new severe thunderstorm warning has come out for Crawford and Sebastian and Sequoia counties until 915. So that does include Fort Smith and that's uh, for 60 mile per hour wind and quarter size hail. So heads up on that in Fort Smith. It's not very far away and moving rapidly, Chris, about 50, uh, 55 miles to the east southeast. Over to you. All right, Carl, and, and as Carl's been talking about the threat uh, with these storms, one of the big ones is going to be that wind threat and the potential for damaging winds. And we see that there's the possibility there's going to be tornadoes, which can bring some of the most violent winds on Earth, and then severe thunderstorms, which can bring uh, very strong winds, 60 miles an hour, 70 mile an hour winds, uh, a possibility with these severe thunderstorm warnings. So by damaging winds, we're talking about the potential for trees to fall down. And if you live in an area where you have trees, trees around your house. This is a very serious situation. Even if you don't, if your neighbors uh, have some doing some you know, work or have left some stuff around, projectiles can go through the air. So we can be dealing with stuff crashing through the windows in a situation with some strong winds. So with that, the threat for some pretty uh, strong uh, winds here, it's not just a possibility, but it is very likely in these areas right here. For southeast Oklahoma, parts of Arkansas, where these storms are already coming through, and then eventually it is likely across much of East Texas, uh, parts of south central Missouri, all the way down, including parts of Louisiana as well. So winds are also uh, dangerous and can be uh, very uh, hazardous when you're on the roads. That's a serious danger. Meteorologist Mark Elliott shows us how to stay safe. High wind events can be deadly, especially if you're caught outside or on the road. Here are a few measures to take if you're caught outside during a high wind storm. If you are not near a sturdy building, take shelter in your car. Move your car to a location where it is least likely to be hit by falling trees or power lines. If you find yourself with no shelter, be mindful of trees, power lines, and the side of the road. Remember, power lines that are on the ground might be live. Do not go near them or touch them. If you're driving, hold the steering wheel with both hands and slow down. Keep a good distance from high profile vehicles. Trucks, buses and vehicles towing trailers only need one strong gust of wind to flip on their side. Oh, of course, we do want you to stay safe. Another thing with the wind is it can push the hail. And we have seen that lately, storms bringing hail to parts of Oklahoma. In this case, nickel and dime sized hail uh, falling here in this uh, Sooners fans uh, yard. Uh, not uh, likely doing too much damage if you have some crops or you have some plants, uh, you have your garden. Yeah, it might tear up some leaves, that sort of a thing. But we talk about the hailstones getting a little bit larger. And we've seen this this week across parts of the southern plants and parts of the south. These, these big hailstones can be driven by the wind into your house. And your if you have a greenhouse or just even some of the windows on your home can be smashed because of some of the large hail and the winds driving through. So this is where... Uh, we are thinking that the hail is likely, in fact, an inch or greater hail is a possibility out of this. In fact, the, the threat anywhere there are thunderstorms really with this going all the way up into Illinois and parts of Missouri, uh, there is going to be the chance for seeing some large hail. And looking at the threat where you would typically expect to see some of the large hail, it's where we're expecting it. It's within this area right in here. And you still have a risk throughout the rest of the south and the mid-Atlantic and around the Great Lakes. So that's where we are right now. And, of course, the way hail forms is we have these uh, very potent, very strong updrafts. So you have this fast rising air, which we're going to have and we do have with the setup right now. And it just continues to compound. Eventually, you get them freezing, growing on top of each other. A lot of warnings to get to after this. Introducing Tide Power Pop. When that came down, I yelled, I don't want to drown in the store. Guys, we've got cars floating again. Oh my gosh. Truly, it was the scariest moment of my life. Don't miss the premieres of World's Deadliest Weather and Deadline to Disaster, Sunday night, only on the Weather Channel. 
Welcome back to our coverage of severe weather. And we have a new tornado warning to tell you about now in southeastern Oklahoma. And this is now well south and east of Oklahoma City. Your threat is done for tonight. It's going to be in southeastern Oklahoma and eventually down into north Texas, where we expect to find the greatest threat for severe weather over the next several hours, certainly also in Arkansas as well. Uh, let's take a look at this new warning in the southeastern part of the state. That is Pittsburgh and Pushmataha counties under warning until 930. And so the rotation showing up. You see that area where it's a little bit of a brighter blue color and then a darker color as well. Right there, that is where the circulation is sitting. And so that is now uh, to the west of Clayton, moving just a little bit to the south of east. And so that'll be coming into Stanley here in just the next few minutes, into Clayton at 841, Neshoba 851, and Nolia at 851 as well. I'm going to circle this area where we're seeing the rotation right now. Let's see if there's any debris showing up right now. Not seeing any evidence of debris, at least uh, not right now, but certainly a dangerous storm headed your way. And in addition to that threat for a tornado, could be some very large hail as well. Uh, that's going to be coming right towards Clayton. Let's get a look at uh, what we're expecting here, uh, talking about possibly some uh, large hail coming through that area on the order of, I would think, uh, a couple of inches possibly with that storm. Now, let's take you farther northeast, and you've got uh, also warning for Haskell and Latimer and LaFleur counties going until 915, and then a big line of storms behind that. Also storms now closing in on Fort Smith, not very far away, a 60 mile per hour wind threat in Fort Smith. Uh, tracking that forward, the leading edge of that kind of depends on where you are in the area, but that's going to be coming in very, very shortly, uh, probably within about 10 minutes or so into Fort Smith. Uh, then down into southern parts of Oklahoma. This is getting very close to the Red River. Got a threat for some two inch hail here. Carter, Jefferson and Stevens counties under Hello. warning until 915. Obstacles. And look at the history of the storm. A lot of reports of golf ball size hail. Comanche, Marlowe and Chickasha as well. Uh, all reports of golf ball or larger hail as this cell has been driving southward could continue to be very nasty uh, coming down into North Texas and eventually into the Metroplex as well. Now, as we get up into Missouri, uh, we've been watching uh, this line of storms for possible tornadoes. Right now, there is a severe thunderstorm warning, and that for Douglas and Howell and Texas counties going until 915. Uh, what we are seeing here is a pronounced area of strong wind. Some little kinks developing within that, but uh, they have not reissued the tornado warning. Uh, but what we do see is an area of very strong wind all along there, and that's where we could be looking at some 70 mile per hour in wind. That coming towards Cass and West Plains, towards Pierce and Mountain View. All of those areas heads up for exceptionally strong uh, damaging wind. Maybe enough wind to actually knock down some tree limbs and some power lines as that comes through. Uh, further north, up into uh, eastern Missouri as well as Illinois, uh, down to one warning now just southwest of Champaign. Uh, that a warning for Macon, Moultrie, and Shelby counties. And you've got a line of storm coming through St. Louis right now, but no warnings on these, and they are uh, weakening at this time. Chris, let's get back to you. And Carl, we are still seeing some of these storms rolling through parts of Arkansas. Meteorologist Mike Seidel is in Fayetteville, Arkansas. That's in the northwest part of the state. He had some strong storms come through a little bit earlier. How are things going now, Mike? It's much better now. They're all off to our south and east, down towards Fort Smith. We have the warnings that Carl just talked about. And that line extends uh, up to our north and east all the way into Harrison, <coughs> excuse me, up into the Ozarks. So it's all pulling through here. We've got some light rain right now coming straight down. The wind is gone. The wind came roaring over the hill here We're in the Ozarks uh, right after 8 o'clock here in Fayetteville. And it blew pretty good for about uh, seven or eight minutes. And that, that was it. Now, the airport only reports observations at least this evening every hour. So I don't have the official wind gust measurement, but I'm estimating out here we gusted certainly over 40, maybe close to 50 miles an hour. Uh, but the power is on, no power out here, and uh, we haven't seen any anything come down out of the trees, limbs or leaves or anything. So not enough wind to cause any issues, at least at our spot. But that has not been the case across uh, the Mid-South and over through the uh, Arklatex. We've had wind damage reports. Uh, actually, the number one reported item this evening is the hail. A lot of reports of one inch to two, even over two and a half inch hail, especially in parts of Oklahoma uh, earlier this evening. So right now we're just waiting for the rain to wind down. The severe threat is over with. 
and uh, we're going to be in good shape for the rest of the evening. So let's go back to uh, Atlanta, and uh, we're going to go to Carl or Chris. All right, Mike, thank you so much. One of the two. There's only two choices. Uh, Mike, thank you so much. And let's take Chris? a look. Uh, this is the hail that you mentioned there. And uh, report here uh, just west of Duncan Central High, hail size 2.8 inches. That is uh, baseball size hail. That is a huge hailstone, certainly enough to cause major damage to cars and also to roofs. And so that is this cell that is now uh, driving southward and getting towards the Red River. Ongoing warning here for two inch hail, Carter, Jefferson, and Stevens counties until. 9:15 at Central Time, and we're going to watch all of this eventually make its way down towards the Metroplex uh, into Dallas and Fort Worth. Uh, come another couple of hours or so, starting to get into the northern part of the Metroplex, and we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. There we go. Hi, I'm Lolly, a Domino's franchisee. As you can see, we're open. Pro.com. Order now. <laughs> In effect. I wasn't sure that I was going to walk away from the situation. They just went to hell. F the roof is different. We're under fire. When that came down, I yelled, I don't want to drown in the store. Guys, we've got cars floating again. Oh my God. Truly, it was the scariest moment of my life. Don't miss the premieres of World's Deadliest Weather and Deadline to Disaster, Sunday night, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 63 degrees with light rain. Tonight, thunderstorms, low 53, winds south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday, rain, high 57, rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Wednesday night, rain, low 40, chance of rain 80%, rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back to our coverage of a very active, severe night across the central part of the country. And these storms have a lot of fuel to work with, which means they're going to be going for a long time tonight, all down across the eastern part of the Lone Star State and right down to the Gulf Coast by tomorrow morning. Right now, we're watching a couple of tornado warnings, one of those in southeast Oklahoma, that is Pittsburgh and Pushmataha counties under warning. And this thing has actually tightened up some. This is actually a stronger circulation that is showing up now just west of Clayton. I'm going to go Go ahead and see if we can see any evidence of debris in this case. We're shooting fairly far up, so would not be surprised if we couldn't see anything. But I will tell you that is a, a pretty strong rotation that is now showing up in the radar here. There's a brand new scan, so heads up. It is time now to get to your safe place in Clayton as you've got a possible tornado coming your way. Uh, and this is going to be on top of you in just a moment. So timing that out. Uh, as that moves just a little south of east, that'll be coming into Clayton at 856. Actually, we've got a brand new scan there. I'm going to move that forward just a little bit. And so that'll be coming into Clayton uh, 853. So we're talking about a couple of minutes here uh, as this moves rapidly off to the southeast. You do not have time to react. Time now to get to your safe place uh, there in uh, Clayton. You've got just a few moments to do that and you don't have time to go out and try to figure out if you can see it or anything like that. Uh, just please get to your safe place right now in Clayton as there's a very strong at least mid-level circulation showing up in the storm and so there certainly is potential for a tornado to come in. Uh, also notice there is a, a circulation that's back up here near Kiowa as well, or Kiowa. Uh, that is just east of Route 69. Uh, no tornado warning on that as of yet, but there certainly is enough wind shear in this area to be supportive of supercells and rotating storms. But uh, again, uh, warning looks like we've got a brand new warning for Clayton uh, in this uh, surrounding area. Let's take a look at that. And so new tornado warning here, uh, now moving east 
uh, 20 miles per hour, so it has slowed uh, a good bit. Uh, moving east to 20 miles per hour right now, that's going to give you a little bit more time. Let me go ahead and redraw that, uh, given that motion, and see what kind of time that gives us. And as we take a look at that once again, okay, so that's giving you a few more minutes. That's giving you maybe another uh, six to seven to eight minutes before it comes into Clayton. But that is a pretty strong circulation uh, now showing up there. So again, if you're in Clayton, please take cover immediately and uh, give, you, give yourself plenty of time uh, to get out of the way of that storm. Now, uh, here up into parts of Arkansas, this is Franklin County. And that's under warning for a possible tornado until 9 p.m. That warning coming out of the Tulsa office and then to the east of that, another warning coming out of the Little Rock office. That is for Johnson County. And so as we look at this, we see that there is a, a little kink that has developed right in there. I'm going to look and see what's going on in the velocity data. Uh, it's not, you know, what I would call profound, but certainly there is a circulation there showing up right in this area. And that is near Batson right now, and it's moving towards the uh, east-southeast. So taking that forward, that'll be coming into, looks like, uh, Edna here in the next few minutes, Woodland at 918, Clarksville at 930, and Lamar at about 945 or so. So possible tornado coming your way. Please uh, take cover immediately in this area as well. And boy, what just a heck of a light show. I mean, look at this. Uh, that has grown. That has stepped up just in the next, uh, in the last few minutes here. Last time we looked at that uh, there, and it just recalculated once again. I mean, the, the computer is constantly doing this. But what we've been seeing consistently is about 2,000 lightning strikes all along this line from southeast Oklahoma into northwest Arkansas. There we go up to 2014, uh, 2281 there, the most recent calculation. Uh, that is a terrific amount of lightning. So we've got uh, major electrical storms coming across uh, huge areas of southeastern Oklahoma and also Arkansas. So please do keep that in mind. Now, some warnings to tell you about in southern Oklahoma, and these cells have had a history of producing very large hail. We had a report of baseball size hail east of Lawton, 2.8 inch hail. Uh, now, warning for Carter, Jefferson, and Stevens counties. And that is for two inch hail. Uh, warning just to the south of that, actually, ping pong ball size hail is the current warning, this uh, most recent warning just to the south of that. Also, warning for Ardmore right now. Let's take a look at the threat here. That's going to be coming right across 35. And again, a large hail threat, uh, looking at uh, quarter size hail. But the, you know, the most significant hail producing part of this storm is now uh, near Carter and Jefferson and Love Counties. And again, just give me a second to uh, adjust the speed on this because these are not moving as quickly as they are much farther north, uh, coming to the southeast, about 30 miles per hour. So that'll be moving towards Wilson more immediately. Nakona after that, uh, Montague or Montague uh, beyond that at about 930 or so. But then after that starts to come down into the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And I'll, you know, I'll tell you, there's a lot of instability here. In fact, I'm going to just go ahead and show you that in this area. Uh, you know, instability is basically fuel for thunderstorms. It's warm and humid air along with the temperature profile as you go up through the atmosphere. And if it's getting cooler, significantly so, and it's real warm downstairs, well, when updrafts are in that environment, they want to punch up really rapidly, and that rapid punching up is what gives you the really tall updrafts that are more capable of producing large hail and damaging wind. So, you know, as we look at the fuel at the instability, you see how it's waning a little bit up in this area. It's going to continue to get sort of pinched off over the next couple of hours here. But down to the south, more towards Dallas, I mean, it's off the charts. Tremendous instability, which means large hail damaging wind coming your way. Much more coming up. When the present is un... <laughs> Some large hail and some gusty winds slamming parts of Oklahoma here. Storm tonight produced a lot of hail, including Oklahoma City. The area is seeing uh, some hail up to quarter size hail, so getting to that severe criteria here. And here's uh, also a look as the storms were coming through in Boynton, Oklahoma as well. You can see the lightning flashing there in the distance in the dark, dark skies as well. It's getting a little bit later in the day at this point. And still, though, you can make out where there's the front edge of that cold air coming out of the storm. And you can see whenever it has that ominous look, Mother Nature's trying to tell you something here. Uh, now we are tracking the same line of storms as it's pushing 
from the plains into the Mississippi River Valley. So we have our eyes on these cities right here and areas in between. From Dallas over to Arkansas, north even uh, to St. Louis, in fact, all the way up into parts of Illinois and Wisconsin. Heavy rain, damaging wind hail, and also the threat for tornadoes, possibly happening at nighttime, which comes with its own complications, its own dangers. We want to get right to the latest with what's happening right now with some uh, analysis from storm specialist Carl Parker. And Carl, as you've been tracking, uh, we've been together this last hour, and as you've been tracking these storms, and you've been tracking them for quite some time, has anything surprised you or stood out to you at this time that's either uh, making you a little bit more nervous the way the atmosphere is behaving or perhaps maybe giving you a little bit of hope? Well, you know, certainly we're seeing uh, just incredible instability in Oklahoma, in North Texas. So I think it's going to be going strong there for quite some time. Arkansas as well. You get farther to the north here, and we're seeing a lot of the instability uh, being pinched off in that area. So uh, that means uh, things are going to be looking a little bit better. But in the meantime, what we've got here is uh, a couple of warnings to tell you about, including uh, a tornado warning, brand new tornado warning that has just been issued there for Bond and Clinton and Madison County going until 9.30 Central Time. Let's take a look at the velocity data. So we can see some evidence of a circulation right in there. It, you know, it's not what I would call the, the strongest couplet in the world, but certainly there is some evidence of rotation there, and that is going to be moving east, uh, coming towards St. Rose right now, uh, also possibly towards uh, Carlisle or Irish Town or areas near those towns. Uh, possible tornado coming your way, but also a damaging wind threat along with that storm. But you get down into uh, Arkansas and Oklahoma, and you've got a very energetic line here. I mean, just a tremendous area of lightning because you've got so much instability in the atmosphere. And there is some wind shear, too, that's going to be supportive of tornadoes. So there is a tornado warning. And look at this. This is near Clayton right now and just about on top of Clayton. Now, we are pretty good long ways from the radar. When you get farther away from the radar, you're shooting higher up because the beam's going out straight and the ground is curving away from you. So we're looking up in the mid-levels of the storm, but that's a pretty strong mid-level circulation that is showing up here just west of Clayton. So please get to your safe place right now in Clayton as this moves to the east. Let's get a look at uh, the vector here. And, you know, actually, well, I tell you, that's, it, that looks like it might be a little bit north of east, to be honest with you, uh, looking at this over the last few minutes. So, you know, it might just pass... Uh, north of that downtown area of Clayton and uh, into areas that are north of that, uh, maybe not coming right into Clayton proper there, but in areas that are on the north side of Clayton. And this does look to be a pretty rural area, but you can get a sense of the vector there. If anything, it looks like it may have taken a little bit of a left turn in just uh, the last couple of frames. So uh, heads up there in Clayton and especially areas to the north and west of Clayton, a uh, possible tornado coming your way. Then as we get up into Arkansas, got an ongoing warning for Johnson County until 930. And uh, here as we look at the velocity data, we're seeing a, a broader spin right in there. It's not a real tight one. It's definitely, you can see it's almost sort of a, like a curly cue right in there. Uh, definitely broadening out relative to what we were looking at moments ago. Uh, and then a brand new tornado warning has just come out uh, to the south of that. Let me get a look at that. And that is a tornado warning in effect for Johnson and Logan counties. So, you know, again, we're looking at, uh, and that's interesting because you've got this, this broader spin that is to the north of that. Uh, you know, I think this is the area of greater concern right there near Spadra, and that is uh, moving towards the southeast near Clark's, going to be coming in towards Clarksville, coming towards Garrett and Augsburg as well. So in all of those spots, uh, be prepared for some circulation coming your way and a possible tornado coming your way. But again, uh, right now, at least, it does appear to be broadening out some. Now, much farther south, this is down into southern Oklahoma. This is Carter, Jefferson, and Love counties. This storm has had a history of producing just incredible hail, uh, baseball-sized hail, and many, many reports of golf-ball-sized hail with this storm. That's about ready to cross the Red River, and you can see uh, how this line is beginning to congeal a little bit more. So you've got a, a line of storms with embedded supercells that will be dropping down into the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex, not moving real, real fast, moving southeast about 20 to 30.
at 20 to 30 miles per hour. But, you know, over the next couple of hours, it's going to be getting into the northern exurbs there of Dallas and Fort Worth. And then beyond that, a couple of hours after that, getting into, say, 11 to 12 o'clock. Uh, it's going to start to come through, and we could be looking at all hazards with these storms in Dallas and Fort Worth tonight. Talking about large hail, damaging wind, even possibly some tornadoes. Less of a threat of tornadoes going down through Texas as we go through the overnight hours. It's going to be more wind. Certainly large hail will be possible, but we don't want to rule out tornadoes. Uh, that's going to be possible as well, especially some embedded circulations, and some of those uh, supercells may flare up from, from time to time. Uh, now, farther north, up into Arkansas, and into Missouri, we've been looking at a damaging wind threat here. A severe warning for Mountain Home, Baxton, Marion, and Searcy counties. And then a new warning here. Uh, Howell in Texas is the ongoing warning, but then another one to the east of that, Howell, Oregon, and Shannon counties. And we're looking at a, a really pronounced bow echo here, a big surge a very strong wind getting a, a pretty good ways from the radar. But right there, when you see that backward C shape, man, look out because we're talking about some very strong wind there, 70 mile per hour wind, maybe even stronger at the apex of that bow. Uh, that coming towards uh, Chapel, uh, Kosh Kanong, Alton, Couch, and Bowes Mill. And all of those areas, heads up for 70 mile per hour wind coming your way. Chris, over to you. Hey, Carl, while you're talking, uh, I, I was watching you, you know, track on the radar, but also look at this Van Buren, Arkansas camera that was below you. And as we've been watching this, a couple of things pointing out uh, or stood out to me as we're, you know, scanning around right now, courtesy of the Arkansas Department of Transportation. Uh, first off, uh, what we're seeing occasionally, you see the sky lighting up. And it's a switching around. It's hard to tell exactly where we are, but where, where Van Buren is is north of Fort Smith. So we're still within the severe thunderstorm warning. However, the bulk of it is going away from this area. And uh, as we're, we're watching it, we're still seeing some of the lightning. And at times, it's streaking across the sky. We're seeing it light up and flash, but something else. This is a reminder here. We are in the dark hours, and oftentimes when we're dealing with severe weather, it's the daytime heating that gives you that extra oomph, and as things cool off, things calm down, but that's not necessarily the case at all. Let's take another look from Van Buren, another location here, uh, and uh, as we're looking at this, there's enough energy, there's enough moisture in the atmosphere that things are not going to calm down. As we can see right here, more of this is expected. And every once in a while, you see this, when it lights up, you see the roads, which are wet, and you can even see it looks like ponding in the median as well. Another reminder that at night, there's a lot more dangers. It's, you know, the, the, the sky's being lit up by the lightning, but you don't necessarily realize there may be some flooding around, puddles where they're not usually. If there is a tornado, you're not necessarily going to see it coming because it's dark. Every once in a while, you get these flashes, but nighttime poses its own dangers, and unfortunately, the storms are not going to be calming down just because it is nighttime and the atmosphere typically cools off. Not the case this time. Too much energy in the atmosphere. And nobody knows better than that, uh, knows that better than meteorologist Mike Seidel, who's live north of here in northwest Arkansas in Fayetteville, where he saw a big storm come through a little bit earlier. Hi, Mike. Yes, a big one, a windy one, but it was a quick hitter. A uh, little rumble of thunder in the distance, but Let's go to the radar. You can see everything now is south and east of here. Just a few leftover uh, light raindrops. They have dropped the tornado watch for here in Washington County as the severe threat has left this part of northwest Arkansas. Peak wind gust nearby Drake Field, upwards of about 38 miles an hour uh, up at Northwest Regional Airport XNA, where you fly in and out on the commercial jets. Uh, the gusts there, only 26 miles an hour. They had about a half an inch of rain. Want to take you back to exactly an hour ago. It was just after 8 p.m. here in Fayetteville. And look at the wind and the rain. We were standing here uh, for an hour, two hours, calm winds, eerie the birds chirping, and then all of a sudden, right over the hill behind me here in the Ozarks, you can hear the swish and the whoosh and the uh, wind just ramp up. And in, in the meantime, as the wind ramped up, certainly did the rain. And it was, you know, it's very similar to being in a squall with a tropical storm. It's raining very, very hard and winds gusting over 40 miles an hour. That's what I estimated here. I think we were easily over 40 miles an hour. Power outage is not too bad so far in Arkansas. Uh, we've had about uh, 2,400 nearby Oklahoma, 
3,600 up in Missouri. We've had a fair amount of trees down, especially in Greene County, and power outages up there, about 9,400 customers. So not horrible power outage-wise, Carl, and uh, hopefully we'll get that uh, power back on pretty quickly now that the winds have died down. Yeah, Mike, we've been talking about the tornado threat all night, and now some new tornado warnings to tell you about in southeastern Oklahoma. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, one of those now south of McAllister, and that is for Pittsburgh County going until 945. So we see the circulation shooting fairly far up, looking at the mid-levels of the storm, but that is uh, basically moving to the east right now, a little to the south of east. So let's track that forward, and that's going to come down towards Counts in the next few minutes. So heads up there in Counts possible tornado coming your way. Uh, then to the east of that, ongoing warning for Pushmataha County until 930. Uh, here we're watching a circulation passing just to the north of Clayton. Uh, looking at the vector here, looks like it's uh, just about due east right now. And so let's track that forward. It's going to be coming across Route 271 and coming towards uh, Kayamichi and Albion by about 940 or so. Uh, then another tornado warning to the east of that, and that is for LaFleur County, and that's going until 12, 945. And here, too, we see a rotation uh, showing up that is near 271. You can see that sort of bright area right there, and then the darker color uh, right next to that. That about ready to cross Route 1. That one moving a little north of east, and will be coming near Concert at 944, and Hodgin at about uh, 951 or so. So in all of these areas, uh, please get to your safe place right now. Also, tornado warnings to tell you about in north West Arkansas on either side of Interstate 40, uh, one of those in effect for Johnson County. And seeing uh, some spin showing up here near Spadra and sort of a broader circulation now. So, you know, tracking that forward, uh, that's going to be coming down to the south towards uh, Clarksville and coming towards Garrett as well. So heads up for a possible tornado coming your way. Uh, looking to the south of that, this all looks pretty diffuse. Uh, to the south of that. I'm not seeing anything that really pops out at this time, but certainly we'll keep a very close eye on that. Uh, and then down into southern Oklahoma, I've uh, been watching this little line segment that's now beginning to congeal. And so, you know, as these storms continue to go on for a while, you know, they start to put out a little area of cool air. And, you know, it looks like it's the same storm that's going down, but what's actually happening is you've got new storms firing along that, that boundary, and that boundary then begins to join uh, storms to each other, and that, that whole big cold pool becomes the basis uh, for which this line develops. So you can see how this is becoming less individual cells and more of a line of storms coming down across uh, parts of the Red River now, and we've got a warning now in Texas, actually a couple of them, uh, Montague County, warning for ping pong ball size hail and 60 mile per hour wind. Uh, also warning to the west of that, and uh, that is for uh, Montague County as well, uh, for again, ping pong ball size hail and uh, for very, very large hail. Actually, to the west of that, uh, looking at a warning for Clay County for 60 mile per hour wind and quarter size hail. Chris? Hey, hey, Carl, you're on the southern end of what is a huge line. The meteorologist Sarah Dillingham and I were looking at this, and you take it here, northwest of Dallas, where you were just looking, and you stretch all the way up these warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings, stretching all the way up here, getting into Missouri through parts of Arkansas with speckled in the tornado warnings. Does this give you any insight to the way the atmosphere is behaving, or does the fact that the, the sheer length and the size of this, does this tell you anything about what may be coming here in the future? Are there any clues, anything to be learned by just the extent of this one line yeah. with all these warnings? Yeah, no question about it. I mean, when you've got more of a, a linear convective system, and certainly there have been some individual supercells on the southern side in particular, so that's an area where we've been a little more concerned about large hail and damaging wind. But when, you know, when you've got those discrete cells, those supercells, they're more capable of producing very large hail and tornado tornadoes, but when you've got a linear convective system, uh, that brings you more of a damaging wind threat. So that's the direction that we're headed in, basically. We're, we're going to continue to see a hail and tornado threat, especially in Oklahoma and parts of Arkansas, but as we go deeper into the evening with more of this linear convective system, it is going to morph into more of a damaging wind threat. 
That's what's going to come down across Texas and also uh, down into parts of Louisiana with still some potential for hail and tornadoes, but mostly it's going to be a damaging wind threat. Uh, you know, also notice the, the instability here. We've talked about this a few times. Instability is basically fuel for thunderstorms, and it's a function of a couple of things. It's low-level warm and humid air, but it's also how the atmosphere changes in temperature as you go up through it if it gets a lot colder. And so where you've got the greatest instability is where you see the maximum punch up of storms, and you can see in that brighter color there where that is. So that's where storms are really going to be active over the next several hours. We're going to have much more on the severe weather threat coming up. Out of your mornings, you need to know what weather is heading your way. Wake up watching AMHQ. Weekday mornings on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 62 degrees with rainy conditions. Tonight, rain and thunder, low 53, rainfall near an inch. Wednesday, rain, high 57, rainfall around a quarter of an inch. Wednesday night, rain, low 40, chance of rain 80%, rainfall around a quarter of an inch. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back. It is a very busy night. We've gotten reports of large hail, baseball size hail in southern Oklahoma, and also a lot of reports of wind damage. And now a whole series of tornado warnings to tell you about in southeastern Oklahoma. Let's go through them now. Uh, these are southeast of McAllister, the latest of them in effect for Pittsburgh and Pushmataha counties until 10 p.m. And so we're seeing some rotation looking pretty far up in the storm, but seeing some rotation uh, showing up uh, now west of Clayton and moving towards the east-southeast. So that'll be coming near Clayton uh, by about 942. We had a close call earlier. There's still a little circulation just north of Clayton and then Neshoba uh, beyond that. Uh, ongoing tornado warning, in fact, uh, near Clayton right now. And just taking a look at uh, what's going on with that. That circulation still there, uh, moving now just to the east at about uh, 20 miles per hour. So that'll be coming towards Kiamichi or Kiamichi at about 934 or so. Sorry if I butchered that. Uh, here we'll take you into the eastern part of Oklahoma. That's LaFleur County. Uh, warning until 945. And uh, this is not quite as pronounced of a circulation coming across Route 1. Right now moving a little north of east. That'll be moving towards Concert as well as Hodgin uh, about 952 or so. Uh, now, as we get you farther northeast, uh, looking at severe warnings, Johnson, Logan, Yell County, we had been looking at a tornado warning here that has been replaced by a severe warning. Also, a whole series of severe warnings in southern parts of Oklahoma and north Texas. We've been looking at some uh, individual cells here, uh, one of which, uh, which is now dropping down into Texas, right in here, uh, has already produced baseball size hail and many, many reports of golf ball size hail, really prolific hail producing storm. That is getting ever closer to Dallas and Fort Worth, and we think it's gonna be a pretty noisy night for you. Uh, damaging wind potential certainly could be very large hail, maybe some tornadoes, and this is gonna be extending deep into the evening. So uh, make sure and stay with us. We'll be covering it uh, all night here on the Weather Channel. And then as we take you into Illinois, uh, I want to show you a tornado warning that is ongoing in Clinton County. And we'll look at the velocity data in this case. Uh, that is washed out a good bit, not nearly what it was. You go back several frames here, uh, particularly right in there. Look at that. You can see how there was a pretty well-defined little circulation right in this area. And then you look at that, you see the brighter orange color there showing you the stronger wind. And as, as you go through time, that really then begins to sort of release and sort of wash out. So I think we've got less tornado potential in that area right now. But certainly an ongoing damaging wind threat. Uh, Southern Missouri in particular, in fact, there's a brand new warning I want to tell you about that is now into parts of uh, Arkansas 
including Clinton. That's Pope and Searcy in Van Buren counties under warning right now. Uh, this is moving southeast at 50, could be 60 mile per hour wind in this area. Uh, then as we take you north, we've got a warning now for Oregon and Shannon counties. And the concern here for a while now has been 70 mile per hour wind. Uh, got a report of 71 mile per hour wind measured in West Plains. And that's not a surprise when you look at the shape of this storm. And, you know, unfortunately, we're not getting as good of a velocity data right now. But what you can see very clearly is this big backwards C shape right there. And so when you see a, a shape like that, that is what we call a bow echo. And that's showing you where the wind is surging forward. And so this is that West Plains where we got a report of 71 mile per hour wind. So some ground truth there. And uh, let's see where that's going to be headed in the next few minutes. Winona certainly it's coming into Alton right now into Thayer right now. We'll be moving into Couch at about 930. Uh, Bill Moore 952 in Van Buren by about 1002. Very serious damaging wind threat uh, along with these storms as they move to the east now. So this is a look at the watches and uh, a little bit of an update to tell you about. There is now a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for North Texas. That is going until 4 o'clock in the morning. So very deep into this evening. We expect the storms to come down across Dallas and Fort Worth and then drive down 35, drive down 45 as well. Eventually come into the Houston metro, probably in the pre-dawn hours. Could be looking at a very serious damaging wind threat there. And I will tell you that it is going to be primarily a damaging wind threat once it gets out of this area. We've got, you know, the, the hail and tornado threat is a little bit higher in that area in parts of Oklahoma, as well as into western Arkansas, uh, maybe down into parts of North Texas. But then once the storms get outside of that area, it's going to become more of a damaging wind threat, and that will extend deep into the overnight hours all through Arkansas towards Memphis, uh, even down into Louisiana as well. Chris, over to you. Yeah, and another way to look at this, Carl, is to see the areas where it is possible. Because you have the watches, and the watches can continue to be issued by the Storm Prediction Center. But we're just highlighting right here the areas where it is possible there will be damaging winds into tonight, or likely or very likely parts of Texas, or pretty much all of Louisiana, even into Mississippi, and all the way up into Illinois and Indiana. Some damaging winds of possibility. Carl just showed us all of the different watches we have, but on top of that, you can see the potential for wind gusts to be up to around 70, 75, or 80 miles an hour with these storms. And that's important to think about because of what those winds can do. Now, if winds are up into the 58 to 74 mile an hour range, we're talking about limbs breaking, large limbs breaking. Some of the shallow rooted trees can be knocked over and semi trucks. That's strong enough for semi trucks to come down and be blown over. And then the potential, which we're in 75 to 80 mile an hour range, roof damage, widespread tree damage, Weak structures may have some significant damage as well. Some of the outbuildings are homes that aren't built very well. And again, here's another look at those winds, 70, 75, possibly 80 miles an hour. And again, this associated with a big line of storm stretching more than 500 miles just this section. We have you covered here on the Weather Channel. <sighs> Hold my pouch. Trust us, us kids are ready to take things into our own hands. Don't think so? Hold my pouch. When we face adversity, we find a way through it. It's about taking care of each other. It's the small parts that make a big difference. At Chevy, we promise to do our. Oh my God. Truly, it was the scariest moment of my life. Don't miss the premieres of World's Deadliest Weather and Deadline to Disaster, Sunday night, only on the Weather Channel. Whew. Lightning and the thunder. Tonight's storms lighting up the skies in Oklahoma and across parts of Arkansas and Missouri. Moving into Texas now. Lightning is going to be a huge danger. Of course, uh, being indoors is 
Uh, one of the benefits of nighttime thunderstorms is uh, you have a less likely chance uh, of being struck by lightning. But of course, uh, now during the overnight hours, there are other threats and some bigger concerns, in fact, uh, with some of the severe weather that happens at night. Of course, you may want to be sleeping with storms that may be an hour, maybe two hours away from uh, where you are right now. But you need to make sure if you have to go to sleep and get a little bit of shut eye, uh, maybe uh, set your alarm uh, when before the uh, storms are about to arrive or make sure you are able to get uh, woken up by some sort of alert, whether it's a NOAA weather radio or if it is your device, your personal device, your phone uh, that has the warnings on there, uh, they all the uh, alerts uh, are you can activate those. You have to make sure that uh, you can hear it too, that you're set up properly for that. So just a heads up here as we are continuing to track that severe weather threat and storm specialist Carl Parker is in the lab looking at some of the latest uh, watches uh, and warnings. But these warnings, Carl, severe thunderstorm warnings, uh, tornado warnings right now, all active with no sign of it letting up anytime soon. Yeah, that's right. And we're going to be in this period where we see all hazards, where we're going to be looking at uh, damaging wind and a tornado and a hail threat. That is going to change through the overnight hours. It's going to become more of a damaging wind threat than anything else with those hazards remaining, those other hazards remaining. But right now in southeastern Oklahoma, getting some tornado warnings and also reports of very large hail. I'll show you that in uh, just a moment here. Uh, tornado warning in effect for uh, Pushmataha County that is going until 10 o'clock central time. And uh, unfortunately, we're in what is called a radar hole. We're a, a good long ways from any of the radar sites. Uh, so we'll just do uh, with what we've got. And uh, you can see there is a circulation there that is uh, near Eubanks. Uh, it's going to be coming into Eubanks about 941 or so. And then uh, coming towards Finley as well. Uh, there's a brand new scan there. I'm going to move that forward just a little bit uh, to get a better sense of that. So coming towards Eubanks here in the next few minutes. And then coming towards Finley at 9.58 and cloudy by about 10.24 or so, uh, looking at uh, pretty strong mid-level circulation with that storm. Then to the north of that, uh, another tornado warning for uh, Pushmataha County until 10 o'clock. Uh, in this case, it's in a little bit more difficult to pick out uh, circulation in the last few minutes. You can see uh, initially where there was one. Actually, there were a couple. There was one near Clayton and then another one up here. And then you, you go through this in time, this velocity data, and you can see how there is still a, a one that is near Clayton there. It's broader. It's right in there. And look, they've just changed that. So that certainly fits with uh, what we're looking at right now. So that is where there is a, a current hazard for a tornado near 271 and moving down to the southeast. Uh, fuel, a uh, possible uh, tornado coming your way. And that, again, is near 271 right now. Uh, also to the north of that, LaFleur County under warning until 945. And uh, here, too, as we look at the velocity data, you can see where there is a, a pretty well-defined circulation near uh, Tallahassee. Tal uh, right in there uh, near 271 and uh, that has really washed out in just the last few frames here. But I do want to show you uh, some of these hail reports that we've seen from these storms as they've been coming through. I mean, they really are remarkable in some cases. Uh, we're talking about exceptionally large hail. There's one inch hail, but look at that Haleyville 2.8 inch hail that is baseball size hail uh, that will definitely destroy your car and then uh, near Wilburton also a report of 1.3 inch hail so uh, again Chris uh, looking at a tornado hail and wind threat that's going to be changing as we get deeper into the evening over to you all right Carl we do have some new video coming into the weather channel right now uh, showing just that some hail but also uh, one of the uh, more serene uh, items that can happen here with severe weather, and that's the rainbow. So rainbow with hail. That's what we're looking at uh, here in Oklahoma, and we continue to watch storms pound. We're not going to see this site now that it's dark, but that hail threat will continue into the overnight hours. These areas right here going into tonight where it's possible we could see hail an inch or greater. And if Carl was just talking about, we've already seen hail that uh, is an inch or greater. All of these different spots is where hail has been reported. As we take a look at a couple of these spots here, here's 1.8 inches. So that's just a little bit larger uh, than a golf ball. 1.75 inches is a golf ball. That's how big this hail. Imagine this 
chunk of ice falling out of the sky. So talking about some big time hail. Then how about this in central high here in Oklahoma? 2.8 inches, 2.75 is the size, as Carl mentioned, of a baseball. Imagine a piece of ice this big coming out of the sky. That's what you're dealing with here in this part of Oklahoma. So some large hail, the best threat or the greatest risk for some of that large hail, it typically in April, are these areas right here. And that is exactly where we're seeing it as that threat continues during the overnight. We love the new apartment. As pronounced here, uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and track that out and see where that's going to be headed. Moving to the south southeast, coming into Eubanks right about now. Uh, Wadena, 942, snow at about 1001 or so. Uh, brand new frame there. I'm going to move this out of the way. And uh, again, it looks like it continues to uh, not be as well formed as it was moments ago. Uh, same story here with this one to the north. Again, push Mataha County. That is near Clayton. Uh, not nearly as well defined as it was uh, earlier here. You can see just a little bit of circulation showing up uh, right around 271 earlier. And that does appear to have uh, really broadened out at this time. Uh, and then also we're watching another tornado warning here. And by the way, a terrific amount of lightning. Look at that. That is 2000 strikes just there in southeast Oklahoma. So a highly electrical line of storms uh, now coming through and a new tornado warning to tell you about in the far southeastern part of the state. And that is McCurtain County under warning until 1015. Let's look at what's going on here uh, again. Unfortunately, that sort of limited uh, radar data. So it's really difficult to get a good look at this storm. So let's just go ahead and track the entire thing out and uh, take that farther east. And that's going to be it looks like it coming into mostly rural areas here near Broken Bow, uh, but maybe eventually towards Mineral as that moves along towards the east. So pretty rural area of southeastern Oklahoma. Now, uh, we've got storms that are dropping down into North Texas right now. And, you know, one thing that we can say about these is they've got this, you know, unlimited supply of fuel, of very warm and humid air available along with some colder air aloft. And that's going to keep these storms going as they drop down through Dallas and Fort Worth. Right now, they're pushing southeast at about 40 miles per hour. We've got a, a hail and a wind threat. We've seen really significant hail in southern Oklahoma, as large as baseball size. It's probably not going to be quite that big as it comes down into Dallas. It's going to be deeper into the evening, but it's still uh, going to be a, a heck of a line of storms with a lot of lightning, very strong wind, certainly could be large hail, and we can't rule out tornadoes as well. We're going to see less of a tornado threat as we get deeper into the evening, but it is likely going to be a really active night there in Dallas and Fort Worth. And in fact, I want to show you how this plays out on one of our high resolution models. And so we'll take this into uh, the next couple of hours. Here we go into uh, 11 o'clock central time and you see the storms continuing to drop uh, southward there. I, you know, I think this model actually might be a little bit behind relative to what's happening right now. Uh, there we go into midnight central time and you see the storms coming right through the Dallas area. Uh, mostly a line of storms, mostly a damaging wind threat, but some embedded supercells within that potentially. So certainly could be some very large hail and maybe even some tornadoes. And that, Chris, uh, then continues to press down towards the Arklatex and Shreveport. Uh, and the storms are uh, going all night long there in eastern Texas and also in uh, Louisiana. Over to you. Tornado sirens going off as a tornado worn storm rolled through Tulsa, Oklahoma just a few hours ago. Hail the size of golf balls. Also heavy rain and intense lightning. And this, the scene in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, as that line of storms rolled through, they also picked up some large hail the size of golf balls. Some intense rain and winds gusting over 50 miles an hour. So that severe weather threat uh, does continue, and we are expecting to see more of the strong storms, as Carl was just showing us. That line sagging to the south, or marching, if you will, to the south, uh, with very likely to likely expectations for severe weather. And it's imminent in many spots with those severe thunderstorm warnings. It is about to happen. But as Carl mentioned, this might be uh, a little behind the game uh, going.
through. So uh, best bet, just stick with us, and we'll continue to track the radar, and we'll continue to time it out uh, the best we can. And this will be updated as well uh, throughout the course of the evening. So we'll continue to uh, show you the latest in the timing. Texarkana also around midnight, maybe afterwards. Shreveport and Bossier City are right in the middle of the night. The uh, dark morning hours uh, going through this part of Louisiana and the Arklatex. Here's Houston and Galveston over to Beaumont. 10 o'clock this evening, again, central time going through. Now 1, here's 2 o'clock, the storms marching through, and even the future radar picking up on a little bit of a bow. So the damaging winds certainly going to be one of the things to watch. Again, Houston over to Galveston, uh, possibly before daybreak. So we're looking at an overnight first thing in the morning. Storms maybe not even getting all the way through until after sunrise and maybe even mid-morning. So these storms come in with a Pretty big punch of potentially damaging winds and some very heavy rain. Here is Memphis. It is going to be after midnight, it looks like, for these storms to be marching through. Situation. They just went a house. The roof just get ripped off. We're under fire. When that came down, I yelled, I don't want to drown in the storm. Oh my gosh. Truly, it was the scariest moment of my life. Don't miss the premieres of World's Deadliest Weather and Deadline to Disaster, Sunday night, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 62 degrees with rainy conditions. Tonight, rain and thunder, low 53, rainfall near an inch. Wednesday, rain, high 57, rainfall around a quarter of an inch. Wednesday night, rain, low 40, chance of rain 80%, rainfall around a quarter of an inch. Here's our seven day outlook. How about this? This, uh, after the storms uh, coming through the scene in Tulsa as the storms uh, move through, happening at sunset, which tends to happen quite a bit here when we talk about storms, but a beautiful view of Mamatis clouds. Uh, it's the air going way up into the atmosphere, hitting a level of equilibrium uh, and then spreading out. And there's a little bit of sinking going on. So the clouds in this case are sort of uh, getting that cool shape by reverse, a little bit of sinking, and it gets these pouches, that pouch look, and they're, they, they have a very uh, almost polished look to them when you see them in person. I think this video is also doing a pretty good job of showing you too, and then on top of that happening at sunset, so just a little bit of pink or orange, uh, depending on your vantage point and your camera at the time. A beautiful scene there, and uh, you just hope that it comes uh, uh, with uh, no result uh, of any injury or damage after some of these storms. And these storms packing a pretty big punch with more video here into the Weather Channel as the storms were moving through and approaching Broken Arrow here in Oklahoma. A little bit of lightning off in the distance, turbulent skies out ahead. These storms have been meaning business, and they continue to mean business here. So cities across the south. Uh, can expect uh, another dose of some storms as well while we're dealing with the plains right now. And there you go, looking up at that, uh, more Mammatus cloud. So heads up here, if you live uh, in New Orleans, you've been dealing with some uh, strong storms lately, a lot of thunderstorms, and Atlanta eventually going to have to deal with the possibility of more heavy rain and thunderstorms for the middle part of the week. So we're going to take a look at that threat for these areas tomorrow, but we got to get through tonight first. And here's what we're dealing with right now. A big line, a lot of heavy rain still moving through here in Illinois and then into parts of Missouri into Arkansas. There's a little break in the, it looks like kind of a chain link with severe thunderstorm warnings uh, and tornado warnings mixed in. So there's a couple here, a little bit of a break and then stretching through 
this part of Arkansas into Oklahoma and Texas. We're going to start with a couple of tornado warnings right now. And here in Oklahoma, uh, this uh, tornado warning is in effect until 10 o'clock. This is in the far southeast portion of the, the state here, north of Antlers, Finley Cloudy, Corinne and Burwell in line with this uh, in the coming minutes. And here, McCurtain County until 1015 here in Oklahoma. This tornado warning again in effect here with severe thunderstorm warnings all around. Right in here is the most likely location for that circulation. So as it is moving in this direction, generally to the east, northeasterly direction, getting to mineral around 1008, somewhere in there. So take cover now. And then the severe weather threat with damaging winds here uh, extending uh, all the way up into Arkansas. Here's Little Rock right here, Hot Springs, Russellville right now. You're dealing with some nasty weather at the moment. So severe thunderstorm warning here, a whole stretch of them. And you can see associated with this line, this is going to be moving through through the next uh, couple of hours. Bouncing back down here. Here's Dallas. Here's Fort Worth. The storms getting over the Oklahoma border, moving through the Red River Valley right now with a lot of lightning associated with these storms. And there's quite a bit of instability. So you can think of instability, the, the warmth and all of the humidity uh, as like the, the high octane fuel that we're dealing with. A lot of pinks and reds and yellows and oranges in here. And we're seeing some of these storms. What happens with some of these storms? Sometimes it can rob some of the energy out of this. And then as we look at what's going on for tomorrow, there's going to be limited moisture, but still enough as this cold front comes through with the moisture coming up from the south that we are expecting to see uh, some of these uh, stronger winds uh, potentially bringing some severe weather. So these are the areas right here where we do have the chance for seeing some of the stronger storms uh, during the day tomorrow. Again, this does include New Orleans. This does include Atlanta. You are in that threat area right now. So cities across parts of the south, you can expect uh, that uh, threat for severe weather. We took a look a little bit earlier, a live look at Atlanta and New Orleans. And this is the scene right now. Calm night uh, for you in Atlanta. We've had some storms in south Louisiana. But again, that severe weather threat is picking up again tomorrow for these areas. It also extends up into eastern Tennessee, South Carolina, even parts of Florida as well. It's possible we're going to see some severe weather. So here's uh, Atlanta and the timing for you getting into the afternoon. A few showers possible, some thunderstorms, a bigger punch likely coming through during the evening, four or five o'clock. And then it's not necessarily a one and done kind of a deal. Stronger line possibly coming through after sunset for you in Atlanta. A bigger view here, that big line comes through New Orleans uh, early in the day. So you're kind of getting a couple doses here. You're seeing it in South Louisiana. Now the whole mess here across Alabama and Georgia moving through and into the Carolinas uh, during the overnight hours, the late night into the overnight hours as this marches offshore. Now we're into Thursday afternoon before this system gets all the way offshore. So on Thursday, parts of Central Florida, portions uh, of uh, the Carolinas also in that threat area. So here on the Weather Channel, we continue to track this right here. Storm specialist Carl Parker and myself are going to be with you for the next couple of hours tracking severe thunderstorm warnings that are approaching the Dallas-Fort Worth area right now. Also, Little Rock, you're in line. The Arklatex here, Oklahoma, down into Dallas, uh, and then over into parts of uh, uh, Arkansas, and then eventually through the rest of the south. We'll be right back. When our daughter and her kids moved in with us, our bargain detergent couldn't keep up. Turns out it's mostly water. So we switched back to Tide. One wash, stains are gone. <laughs> Don't pay for water. Pay for clean. It's got to be Tide. We see some pretty extreme weather here in Iceland. Blizzards all winter. Winds at 150 miles per hour. If the roads aren't cleared, people can't get anywhere. But no matter how crazy it gets, we know when and where to get to work. Data on the IBM Cloud helps us maintain 8,000 miles of roads across the country. It helps keep millions of our visitors and our own families safe. That's the sound of some hail. And you can see the hail the storms have brought tonight here. And seeing some uh, reports from some pretty big hail uh, here, though, just about 
uh, up to about quarter size hail for the uh, Boomer Sooner here. And storms have been rolling through parts uh, of Oklahoma and now marching still in Oklahoma. This was in Oklahoma City earlier, though, when it was still daylight. But now during the dark hours here, uh, we're starting to see more of this. Uh, this also before the uh, sun had gotten all the way down below the horizon, so still enough light to see this storm approaching. And it uh, looks like we've got ourselves a time lapse here. You can see how fast the cars are moving along, but you can also get a sense of the direction that this storm is going. It's approaching the camera and that cold air coming out with the warm air rising up and over, creating that shelf look to the cloud and that turbulent motion underneath the clouds, those dark skies overhead, uh, promising an ominous experience with Mother Nature here in Boynton, Oklahoma. Now we are still watching this same line of storms as it is pushing from the plains now into the Mississippi River Valley. And we're talking pretty soon here in the Dallas Fort Worth area through Arkansas and even as far north as the St. Louis area and areas east there of St. Louis. We're watching for more heavy rain, damaging wind, large hail and a threat still somewhat for some uh, dangerous nighttime tornadoes. We want to get back now to storm specialist Carl Parker, who's in the lab, and I know, Carl, you've been uh, analyzing these individual storms, tracking the overall uh, progression of the atmosphere and the way these storms are going. Over the past couple of hours, have you been looking at this? Anything stood out to you, or are you adjusting your thinking on the way things uh, have been evolving over time here? Well, you know, I think a lot of it is playing out as the models have suggested. We've had some, you know, initial very strong supercells with tornadoes and also with a very large hail threat and that is gradually going to morph into more of a damaging wind threat. We're going to see a big long line of storms continuing to press southward down into Texas and through Arkansas and eventually into Louisiana as well. But we still do have some tornado warnings to tell you about in southeastern Oklahoma. Uh, one of those now in effect for Pushmataha County going until 10 o'clock. Uh, honestly looking at the velocity data here uh, not seeing a lot of evidence of circulation uh, right now and look at that uh, you see that it has just dropped off there, so they did not uh, decide to extend that. Uh, there is now a new tornado warning uh, that is uh, just to the west of uh, the, the old one, McCurtain County. That's going until 1045, so you've got two here. You've got one, that smaller one, and then another one from McCurtain County right there. Let's take a look at the velocity data and see what's showing up here. You know, unfortunately, this is a you know, radar hole. It's really difficult to see, but before we lost the image there, you could very clearly see a strong circulation right there. Uh, this is in a largely rural area, but let's track it out nonetheless, see where that might be headed. Uh, if we've still got a tornado at that time, uh, maybe it makes its way towards Wicks by about 1037. Then let's take a look at this next one that is just off to the north here. And uh, going forward on that, big surge of wind there. It looks like a little bit of a notch has developed right along the leading edge of that. And again, the radar data is not real clear, but uh, taking that forward, that uh, coming into Mount Hermon right now, and then moving down towards Route 70 beyond that. So uh, ongoing, very dangerous storms here in southeast Oklahoma. And look at the lightning here, 1,700 strikes for just this section of storms that is coming through southeastern Oklahoma right now. Now, all this weather, as we've been talking about, is on its way for Dallas and Fort Worth, and that is starting to happen now. So we've got a warning in effect here to the north of the Metroplex, Cook and Denton and Wise Counties, under warning for 70 mile per hour wind. I want to show you the velocity data. Look at that. A very strong wind now coming down there. Looking at some of these deeper blue colors, that's a few thousand feet off the ground. Let's take a look at uh, what kind of velocities we're talking about here. And uh, I mean, they are up there. When you get into that color, you're looking at some very strong, that's a 78 mile per hour wind inbound uh, coming down just west of 35 and moving south at, I believe, about 40 miles per hour. I'll double check that. Uh, moving now at 35 miles per hour. So let's take that forward and see who that's going to be affecting here in the next few minutes. Big, very strong surge of wind. And there's a brand new scan there. I'm going to redraw that since we just got that new scan. 
actually looks like it's gotten a little bit stronger just in the last couple of minutes. Look at that uh, west of Valley View. Let's see what kind of wind we're talking about here. Wow, that's an inbound velocity of 91 miles per hour. Now, that is several thousand feet off the ground. That's not exactly what's happening at the ground, but that is a terrific amount of wind that's occurring off the ground. And so as at least a major part of that is transferred down to the ground, we could easily be talking about 70 mile per hour wind. Uh, maybe even getting into some 80 mile per hour winds. So I'm going to run this back just a second so we can get a sense of the vector here. Uh, that is just about due south, maybe just a little east of due south. And let's go ahead and track this out one more time, uh, looking at the leading edge of it. Uh, dropping southward and towards Denton. So that's going to be coming uh, towards Valley View. Uh, very short order here, just another few minutes. Sanger at 1017, Crum at 1023, and Ponder at 1030. And again, we're talking about 70 mile per hour wind here, straight line wind and maybe even stronger than that in some spots as we're seeing some exceptional velocities uh, off the ground. Now, uh, taking a little farther west, got some other warnings to tell you about as well. One of those for Jack and Young counties, looking at the possibility of some very large hail there. Also, Jack and uh, Montague or uh, Montague County and Wise County. Uh, that's going uh, towards the south now at about 35 miles per hour golf ball size hail with that cell and we're concerned about golf ball size hail along with the cells uh, farther to the west and you can see these hail cores one of those hail cores now just about ready to come into Jacksboro so heads up uh, could be some golf ball size hail on the way for you another one of those hail cores is now just west of Bowie so these are certainly some very mean storms and they're going to be coming across the Metroplex primarily primarily with a wind and hail threat uh, not as much of a tornado threat but there certainly could be tornado warnings as it comes down and across Dallas and Fort Worth and speaking of that I uh, got a brand new tornado warning to tell you about just northwest of Little Rock let's zoom in on that uh, this is a tornado warning coming towards Conway Conway Perry and Polk counties under warning until 1045 uh, kind of noisy data here, but you can see the little dog leg that's sitting right in there near Interstate 40. That's where the possible tornado is, and that's coming right down Interstate 40. Uh, coming towards Kenwood right now. Get to your safe place right now in Kenwood. Morrillton, 1019 or so. Plumerville, uh, 1032. And Menifee at 1043. I'm going to make sure that we've got the right vector on this. Uh, looks like that's about right. And let's also double check the forward motion on the storm uh, moving east now at 40 miles per hour. So actually, I'm going to uh, change this speed on this very quickly. We've had a lot of different motions on the south side of all this. The motions have been uh, as slow as 20 miles per hour on the north side as much as 55. Uh, so we've actually got a motion of 40 here. Uh, that's taking it into Morrillton at 1012 into uh, Plumerville at 1020 and Menifee at 1028 possible tornado coming your way you can see the circulation showing up there uh, there's a brand new scan and you know this is actually uh, pretty impressive right there we're, we're in some sort of uh, poor radar coverage but that's a, a pretty impressive signature let's also see if there's any evidence of debris uh, not seeing that at this time but we're shooting way up here so you'd have you'd be talking about it you know really terrific tornado to put debris that high up into the atmosphere but that is as I mentioned uh, a well-defined circulation there coming towards Marlton so please get to your safe place right now as we've got a, a possible tornado coming your way uh, then outside of that we're looking at severe thunderstorm warnings and you know this is not very far away from Little Rock uh, moving towards the southeast let's just do a larger area of timing to get a sense of when this may come into Little Rock and going all along the leading edge here, you know, it's primarily, as I mentioned, going to be a damaging wind threat, but there certainly can be circulations that develop within that. And at this point, that's probably coming into Conway at about 1034 and getting into Little Rock in just a little bit over an hour or so with some very strong wind potentially. Uh, I think we're looking at mostly uh, winds of 60 miles per hour, the, the warnings right now, but certainly we have seen some even stronger winds on the north side of all of this, uh, particularly as you get up towards the Missouri state line there. Uh, speaking of which, we'll go up there and we see an uh, ongoing severe warning near Lick Mountain. Also some severe warnings uh, not very far away from Poplar Bluff. That's Carter and Ripley counties under warning. So heads up in Poplar Bluff. We've got some potentially strong wind coming your way. 60 mile per hour wind is a threat there.
So looking at the watches, uh, these are going uh, for quite some time deep into the overnight hours, Chris, as there's uh, plenty of instability, especially in Texas and Louisiana. And so we expect that these storms are going to be really strong uh, right until the sun comes up tomorrow morning. Back to you. All right, Carl, with several warnings uh, to track right now, Carl's going to dive in a little bit deeper while we check in with what it was like to be in some of these storms. We're going to go to northwest Arkansas. That's where we find meteorologist Mike Seidel in Fayetteville with a look at the conditions there. Severe warm thunderstorms rolled through northwest Arkansas on Tuesday evening. Here in Fayetteville, the impact was minimal, but it was rather rambunctious for about 15 minutes right after 8 p.m., Take a look as the squall line moved through. The wind picked up coming out of the Ozarks right across town here on the southwest side. Uh, estimating the wind gusts here about 40 to 45 miles an hour. Nearby Drake Field gusted to 38, but up at Northwest Regional Airport, only gusting to 26 miles an hour, picking up about a half an inch of rain. One thing we noticed was the amount of lightning. Look at this, almost continuous flashes of lightning overhead. And this went on for about 15 or 20 minutes. Now, there were some bolts that came down pretty close, but just a lot of lightning in the sky as this squall line rolled through. We were under a severe thunderstorm warning, but no reports of any damage, at least in the immediate Fayetteville area at this point. Leftover rain showers for the next hour or so, and then after that, skies clear up. It's going to be a, a nice day on Wednesday. Sunny skies cooler than average mid-60s, and for the rest of the week, a warming trend back to 80 on Friday. Next chance of any storms in this part of the state, northwest Arkansas, the Ozarks, not until late Saturday and Saturday night. All right, thank you so much, Mike. And right now on this night here in Memphis, the threat for storms does remain here. Southwestern Tennessee under a flood advisory as well. And there's a slight risk for some severe storms tonight. And with that, if we've been talking about, you're included in the possibility of seeing some damaging winds out of this. Can't rule out some large hail and still a possible uh, tornado spin up here with this line of storms uh, as we're watching it move across parts of Arkansas right now. By midnight, this is where that line should be roughly, give or take here, some miles. Uh, Memphis, uh, then eventually right after midnight. So, uh, you know, just a big heads up. I'd say you know, even before, around 11, before 11, through about 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, certainly a time to watch and be alert that these storms could be lasting with the lightning going for quite some time with a few showers lingering in the morning. So for this evening here for Dallas and Fort Worth and some of the other areas, Again, uh, Carl mentioned this earlier, and I think this is a little bit behind the game here, uh, but we're going to be here live tracking these storms as it does uh, roll through Dallas. And the way we've been seeing things is sort of like a, like a one-two punch in some cases. The, the wind coming in with some storms in one direction, and then the line comes through. So we're going to see a possibly a quick one-two hit for some areas here uh, as we uh, continue to track the storms moving through the Arklid Tex as well. Uh, here's uh, Shreveport and Bossier City, your Texarkana, East Texas, including Marshall there. And we'll put this into motion through the nighttime hours, the morning dark hours, if you will. Here's 2 o'clock in the morning and things likely rocking in a big way here across portions of northwest Louisiana. There's that bow feature that is so often indicative of and representative of some very strong winds associated with this. Now we'll look at Houston. There's Galveston, Beaumont here in Texas as well. These storms coming through, possibly arriving before daybreak, if not right at daybreak or shortly thereafter in the Houston and Galveston area. And as we continue to watch uh, these areas here in South Louisiana, we jumped ahead now, it's 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Also, here's Baton Rouge uh, by about 7 o'clock, so also another around daybreak kind of a deal or mid-morning or early afternoon. Want to go back now to storm specialist Carl Parker with a look at this threat and how things are developing here, Carl. 
Yeah, and Chris, we're watching a very active line now coming down across parts of North Texas as well as into uh, Southeast Oklahoma. Let's take a look at some of the warnings in Oklahoma, first of all, including the tornado warning that is in effect in the far southeastern part of the state, McCurtain County. Uh, this cell now moving southeast at 70 miles per hour. So heads up in Cheatham, a possible tornado coming your way. A lot of lightning with this, too. Look at that. Uh, that is 2,400 strikes there in southeastern parts of Oklahoma as well as southwestern Arkansas. Uh, down into North Texas, a very strong cell now across the 35 corridor. Could be some 70 mile per hour wind along with this. Cook, Denton, and Wise counties under warning until 11 p.m. Uh, you know, every once in a while you get a really good look at the wind that is coming in, if it's coming right down the, ra uh, the radial, as we say, towards the radar. And, you know, in this case, we certainly are getting a, a really uh, good look at what's going on with the wind here. Uh, that's an inbound velocity of 78 miles per hour. That's off the ground a little ways, but certainly we could be talking about 70 mile per hour wind. And that is dropping towards the southeast right now, uh, coming towards Crum at 1023, Stony at 1029, and Denton at 1033. So some exceptionally strong straight line wind uh, moving down into these areas. We'll have more on this coming up in just a few minutes. I wanted more from my scene. 800-819-5827. To get the most out of your mornings, you need to know what weather is heading your way. Wake up watching AMHQ. Weekday mornings on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 62 degrees with rainy conditions. Tonight, thunderstorms, low 53, winds south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday, rain, high 57, chance of rain 90%, rainfall around a half an inch. Wednesday night, rain, low 40, chance of rain 80%, rainfall around a quarter of an inch. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back to our ongoing coverage of severe weather and some very strong storms are now coming down into the Dallas and Fort Worth Metroplex. We've got a warning now for 70 to 80 mile per hour wind right along I-35 and that in effect for Denton County as well as Cook and Wise counties and that uh, little segment now coming towards Denton. You can see the exceptionally strong wind that is showing up in that blue color right in there. Sometimes you get a really good look at the wind when it's coming right towards the radar which is the case in this case. There's an inbound velocity of 77 miles per hour, 79 miles per hour. So we very well could be looking at some 70 to 80 mile per hour wind here as this moves off to the southeast. Uh, last I saw it was moving southeast at about 40 miles per hour. Uh, that is still the case. Let's take a look at when this is going to be moving. It's just about on top of you in Denton right now. It's not very far away at all. It's going to be moving down into Denton in short order, uh, coming into Crum more immediately, and then into Denton at 1031 and into Argyle at 1036. So you're talking about some really strong wind here, certainly the type of wind that can cause some minor structural damage, some damage to roofs, bring down some tree limbs, if not entire trees, and bring down some power lines as well. Uh, that is what's headed your way in just a few minutes uh, there in Denton and surrounding areas as well, and eventually down into Dallas. So primarily what we're looking at with this cell is going to be a damaging wind threat, but there could be some quarter size hail as well. And you see that uh, big area of heavy rain and hail there uh, now just coming into Sanger. Now uh, to the west of that, uh, Montague County and Jack and Wise counties under warning for damaging wind and also for large hail. Uh, could be some golf ball size hail with these cells. Same story there for Jack and Young counties. And eventually that's going to sag down and towards I-20. And we can see some of the more impressive hail cores. Uh, one of those uh, showing up near 380. Uh, just tracking those out to show you where they're going to be headed in the next few minutes. 
Uh, one of those coming towards Agnes, uh, another one of these coals, uh, cores, I should say, coming towards Perrin and Joplin, and then another area where we've got some, most likely some large hail uh, dropping down west of that and towards Grayford. So in all of those areas, look out for the possibility of some golf ball size hail uh, coming your way. Uh, then as we get up into Arkansas, we're looking at a tornado warning and some severe thunderstorm warnings here as well. Uh, tornado warning right along Interstate 40. That's Conway and Perry counties under warning until 1045. Now, uh, this is a, a little bit of a like a curly cue that has developed right along the leading edge. See that little dog leg right there that has developed along the leading edge of this very strong wind. So there, you know, there is potential for a tornado there, but I think, you know, perhaps what we could be looking at is just a, some very strong straight line wind uh, that's coming towards Conway and Gold Creek. And, you know, here's another case where we're getting a really good look at the wind. And, you know, in this case, it's not very far away from the radar at all. When it's a long way from the radar, it might be, you know, six to seven to 8,000 feet up. You don't know if all that velocity is coming down to the ground. Well, in this case, we're probably down to, you know, one to 2,000 feet. I'll have to check that. Uh, but certainly it's not far away from the radar at all. And there you see an inbound velocity of 83 miles per hour. So in addition to this threat for a possible tornado, where you see that little bit of a curly cue, You've got a, a larger damaging wind threat and a very serious one that is coming towards Conway and surrounding areas as it moves off towards the uh, southeast. So heads up there in Y, in Gleason, and in Conway and Mayflower, uh, you know, we could be talking about easily some 70 mile per hour wind coming your way as that moves through. And there is a larger warning now that does include Little Rock. I'm gonna get the latest on that for you. Uh, motion here now is southeast at 45 miles per hour. They are warning for a 60 mile per hour wind right now. Would not be surprised if that changes just based on what we're seeing on the radar near Conway. I think, you know, we do have certainly some potential for some even stronger wind uh, coming towards Conway. And I'm gonna just tr track this out, sort of the larger uh, view here uh, to see where that's gonna be coming in to Little Rock. And that'll be at about 1057 or so on its current uh, speed, at its current speed and on its current trajectory uh, coming into Little Rock near the top of the hour with uh, some very strong winds. So heads up on that uh, big storm coming your way. So as we look at the watches here, uh, they go until three to four o'clock in the morning. You notice there's just a tiny little area of a tornado watch that is left. And so, you know, what that's implying is that the, you know, optimal conditions for rotating storms, supercell storms that are more likely to produce tornadoes and large hail really have been in parts of Oklahoma, also in parts of Arkansas. And the threat is going to be morphing over the next few hours here, changing into more of a damaging wind threat with still some large hail, especially in North Texas, where the instability remains very, very high, uh, but not quite as much of a tornado threat as we get deeper into the evening, Chris. And so, uh, you know, there is at least that, but it's still gonna be a very dangerous night. Uh, that is absolutely true. And there's still, Carl, we know tornado warnings being issued, so we can't completely rule that yep. out as well. We'll get those latest ones coming to you in just a second. But back to that wind threat, the, the storms that Carl is tracking right now do have a history of producing some strong winds. West Plains here, 71 miles an hour. Sherwin, a report of 70. And in Tulsa, a 75 mile an hour wind report there. And that threat for more strong, possibly damaging winds extending now uh, into Texas and into Louisiana. Here are the watches Carl was showing us and some of the possibility, the potential for that. this is to see winds gusting up to 80 miles an hour, possibly 70 or 75 miles an hour. And we know that even 60 to 70 mile an hour winds, we can see damage. And then that range 75 to 90, we're talking widespread tree damage, also roof damage to homes as well, and some weak structures could be damaged. Again, severe threat continuing. It's Velveeta shells and cheese versus the other guys. Clearly, Velveeta melts creamier. Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Paste, the incredible rubberized paste. Right out of the tub, Flex Paste is super thick. It clings to the surface and it instantly fills gaps and holes. 
And once flex paste dries, it turns into a strong, flexible rubber. To show you the power of flex paste, I took this chicken wire. Woo! Bent, shaped, and covered it using only flex paste. And created the world's first flex paste rubber boat. Not only does flex paste seal up every hole, but it creates a strong, watertight barrier. And the inside is completely dry. Ha! Oh, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Get Flex Paste and the Flex Seal family of products at FlexSealProducts.com. If your gums bleed when you brush, you may have gingivitis, and the clock could be ticking towards bad breath, receding gums, and possibly tooth loss. Help turn back the clock on gingivitis with Paradontax. Leave bleeding gums behind. Paradontax. Motorcycle riders love the open road, and GEICO loves helping riders get to where they're going. So to help even more, GEICO is giving new and current customers a 15% credit on their motorcycle policies with the GEICO Give Back. And because we're committed for the long haul, the credit lasts your whole policy term. The GEICO Give Back, helping riders focus on the road ahead. When it comes to parenting, you're a pro. You know reflexes are key. You know your kid doesn't step around puddles. And wet shoes, not cool. You know what else isn't cool? Those cheap leaky diapers. Because with Loves, you get the pro-level leak protection you're looking for. Loves. Parent like a pro. Not even our competitor's best battery can match the power of Energizer because Energizer Ultimate Lithium is the longest-lasting AA battery in the world. Energizer. Backed by science. Matched by no one. Is that coming this way? Active tornado warnings in effect. I wasn't sure that I was going to walk away from the situation. They just went to hell. F*** the roof just get ripped off. We're under fire. When that came down, I yelled. I don't want to drown in the store. Guys, we've got cars floating here. Oh, my gosh. Truly, it was the scariest moment of my life. Don't miss the premieres of World's Deadliest Weather and Deadline to Disaster, Sunday night, only on the Weather Channel. This is Severe Storm Central. You're watching the Weather Channel. That is some lightning. That is some thunder. Storms lighting up the skies right now as they were earlier. The difference, it's dark now across uh, much of the United States here. As we look at the areas in the storm threat, it's dark. And we are still dealing with the potential of some strong, damaging winds across parts of Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri. More scenes like this will be seen and heard likely and possibly heard before it is seen with thunder rumbling in, possibly hail as well, pounding on the house. Multiple threats still, Carl. The good news is, uh, at least uh, if there is a little bit of good news with this, that tornado threat going down a little bit, but not zero yep. yet. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, what, what you're thinking, what's catching your eye at the moment. Well, you know, I'll tell you, there's just so much instability out here. These storms continue to be really, really strong. We've got a, a big line, a big linear complex of storms, and so with that, it's mostly going to be a damaging wind threat going forward, but we do see some little circulations that have been developing uh, within and ahead of the line, and one of those, uh, most recently here in parts of western Arkansas, that is Polk County under warning until 11 p.m. Uh, this has uh, been really interesting to watch the evolution of this, because you go back a couple of scans here, and right in there near Mineral, uh, that is very clearly a rotation showing up right there, but then you had this big push a very strong wind, the leading edge of a line of storms coming through, getting ready to swallow that tornado up, and sure enough, uh, boom, there it comes. It comes right through there, and uh, that's the end of that tornado. But there's very strong wind that is now coming through uh, behind that. So I think we've got uh, far less of a tornado threat, but just a, a damaging wind threat in this area and a terrific amount of lightning. Uh, that is 2,000 strikes there in that area in southeastern Oklahoma and also into western Arkansas, and a highly electrical uh, line of storms coming through. 
All that weather now coming down into the Dallas and Fort Worth Metroplex. We've been watching a very dangerous storm on the north side. Uh, Cook and Denton and Wise counties under warning until 11 p.m. This is not quite as pronounced as it was a few moments ago, but still some very strong wind uh, showing up here. And we got 70 mile per hour wind reported near Sanger. Uh, Sarah tells me uh, that I'm not surprised at that at all. Uh, I'll show you why here in just a moment. So that is coming towards uh, North Lake in just a few minutes. Corinth at 1037. Uh, Shady Shores 1040. Highland Village 1044. 70 plus mile per hour wind a possibility with this storm. Now uh, notice as we go back a couple of frames here with this velocity data. Just a really look at that right there. I mean that is such a strong signature. Uh, that was what came into Sanger and that's where we got a report of 70 mile per hour wind. And in the most recent frames, uh, it's not quite as profound as that, uh, but still you've got a very serious damaging wind threat. Nonetheless, we've got a new scan there and the leading edge of that uh, coming towards Flower Mound and also towards Hackberry. So we're really uh, getting towards the Dallas area at this point. Uh, looking at uh, a damaging wind threat and possibly also some large hail. I'm going to track that forward, assuming that we do continue to see uh, a warning on this. Uh, that coming towards Lake Dallas, towards Louisville, and also towards Grapevine as well. So heads up on that. Uh, off to the west of that, got a warning now in effect for Jack, uh, Montague, and Wise counties. Also another warning down towards Mineral Wells. That's a new warning in effect there across uh, I-20. That's Jack and Palo Pinto and Parker counties under warning until 1130, looking at the possibility of some 60 mile per hour wind and also some half dollar size hail. And then a warning on the northeast side of the Metro Delta and Fannin and Lamar counties under warning until 1130. So, you know, again, sort of backing up here, uh, all this weather is really now closing in on Dallas and Fort Worth, not very far away from downtown Fort Worth at all. Will not be at all surprising to see a warning uh, pop out for you. And primarily what we're going to be looking at is a damaging wind threat, but also some large hail. And uh, it, there could be a tornado threat here. Uh, right now, we have we have not really seen any tornado warnings in North Texas. Uh, most of those have been up in Oklahoma and conditions are going to be more favorable for wind and hail here, but we certainly can't rule out tornadoes as well. Chris, over to you. All right, Carl, we're going to take a look at uh, another thing that we're going to be watching for. Not the rainbows. We lost the sun. That's not going to happen. But what's bouncing occasionally here in the field? The hail. A hail threat does remain with some of these storms. Of course, the damaging wind threat is a real uh, big one that we're going to be tracking here at the Weather Channel as it gets closer to the Dallas-Fort Worth area and into Little Rock. But these areas also could see some large hail. Still possible for uh, many locations, and we have already seen reports of some very large hail getting up around baseball or golf ball size hail in Shawnee and in Perkins, that baseball size hail central high there uh, reporting getting almost up to just about three inches there, 2.8 inches. And this is typically where you are at the greatest risk this time of year, late April, for the possibility for seeing some large hail. Where we're seeing some strong storms right now, a line, a new severe thunderstorm warning right here. These storms are marching in, bearing down on Little Rock and Dallas. Your along with some uh, large hail and some tornadoes. We don't expect that it's going to be a big tornado night going forward. We did have uh, quite a few tornado warnings in Oklahoma over the last few hours here, but that is probably going to be on the wane, and we're going to be looking at more of a damaging wind threat, which is not to say that we're not going to see any tornado warnings, not at all. There certainly will be some additional tornado warnings, almost certainly, uh, but uh, at this point it's going to be more of a wind and hail threat, and that is now coming down into Dallas and Fort Worth. And let's take a look at what these storms are doing. A uh, remarkable storm here in Cook and Denton and Wise counties. Uh, this thing's got a little bit of a spin to it. In fact, uh, we've been looking at some very strong wind uh, down through Sanger. We got some 70 mile per hour wind. There's an ongoing threat here for 70 plus mile per hour wind. It does look like it's not quite as profound as it was earlier. You know, part of that is that we're looking a little bit lower in the atmosphere, but part of that is just that it, I think it's also uh, beginning to weaken some. 
but that coming towards Highland Village as well as Louisville and coming into Grapevine, you can see this really sort of profound area. And I'm actually going to redraw that a little bit based on the vector that I just saw there, a little bit more towards the uh, south southeast, I think, is where this thing appears to be headed. So coming towards Louisville and Grapevine and also into Carrollton, some very strong wind uh, now headed your way. And I'm also going to go back and, and just take a look at the structure of this thing. And you can see that there, there's definitely a swirl there. I mean, you know, right in there and then right in there. And so, you know, this is, you know, what we call the rear inflow notch right there. And that is precisely where we've seen this, this very strong wind uh, coming down with the storm. And again, in Sanger, which is right where that thing came through, uh, that's where we had a report of 70 mile per hour wind. Now off to the west of that, uh, warning now for Jack and Montague and Wise counties until 11 p.m. looking at the possibility of some large hail here. Could be some uh, golf ball size hail, I believe. Let's take a look at the particulars on this warning uh, as this has come out. Uh, actually down to quarter size hail now. And then off to the west of that, another warning in effect for Jack and Palo Pinto uh, looking for half dollar size hail with these storms and also 60 mile per hour wind. And you can see the uh, core now coming down near Perrin, not very far away from Mineral Wells. And also some pretty good lightning uh, coming into Dallas and Fort Worth as well. Now up into Arkansas, uh, we see some very strong storms, uh, a big long line of storms coming right down into Little Rock, not very far away from Little Rock at all at this time. Uh, just knocking on the door here, uh, looking at a warning for 70 mile per hour winds. And I'll show you what we saw in the velocity data moments ago. And uh, in fact, let's just go to that right now. And then right in there, that little notch. You know, just exceptionally strong. This is getting right down. I mean, we're sub 1,000 feet at this point, and you're still looking at some velocities that are that are way up there between uh, Maumel and Conway. Inbound velocity of 75 miles per hour. So when you're getting down that low, when you're shooting that low, uh, you've got a pretty good shot at getting that translated to the ground. So, you know, I think we're going to be looking at some exceptionally strong wind uh, coming across this, this corridor, right across this Conway to Maumel corridor, and then coming down into Little Rock as well. Uh, 70 mile per hour wind, and it's not far away. Uh, moving into Blue Hill at 1045, into Gravel Ridge at 1055, and coming into Little Rock uh, near the top of the hour. So heads up, uh, certainly enough wind to cause some damage to trees and the power lines are coming down there into Little Rock. And then farther south and west, Clark and Garland and Hot Spring counties under warning until 1115. Again, you've got a threat for damaging wind here. Uh, and that is also the case farther north. It looks like we've got a brand new tornado warning on that area we were just watching. So that is Faulkner and Lone Oak and Pulaski counties. And you can see that little notch that is developed right along the leading edge there. So this is going to pass just north of Little Rock right there. You see that little curly Q right there. That's where you've got a possible tornado developing just north of Mayflower. And that's going to come down and looks like across Jacksonville and Cabot as well, coming towards Cato uh, in the more immediately next few minutes, uh, then coming towards Macon at 11 o'clock, then Jacksonville at 1107 and Cabot at about 1111. Brand new scan there. I'm going to move this uh, a little bit forward and you can definitely see a little swirl in that area uh, moving into Cato about 1050 or so. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like in velocity data. And, you know, it's definitely a little a kink, a little bit of a dog leg right in there where you've got the, a possible tornado developing. So, you know, heads up on that as that comes towards Jacksonville. Brand new scan there uh, indicating the potential for a tornado in these areas uh, as that moves southeast, I believe, at about 40 miles per hour. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the speed on this. And let's see, we've got a motion at east at 45 miles per hour. So heads up there, you know, at a minimum, this is going to be damaging wind that is coming into your area. But we could also be looking at possibly a little spin up here, a little tornado developing, probably not a long lived one, uh, but a tornado. Uh, nonetheless, we certainly do see damaging tornadoes in this type of situation along the leading edge of strong thunderstorms. All right, now farther north, uh, looking at a warning for uh, independence in Jackson and White counties, severe thunderstorm warning, and another severe warning now for Clay and Dunklin and Green counties. That is going until 11.15 central time, so a damaging wind potential there. So just a tiny little area 
of a tornado watch left at this point. Uh, all the rest are severe thunderstorm watches, and that's telling you how this uh, threat is going to be progressing through the night. It's going to be less of a tornado threat, which is not to say none, just less of a tornado threat and more of a damaging wind and large hail threat and large hail particularly in Texas. We'll have much more on all this coming up in a few minutes. This Currently in our area, 62 degrees with rainy conditions. Tonight, thunderstorms, low 53, winds south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday, rain, high 57, chance of rain, 90%, rainfall around a half an inch. Wednesday night, rain, low 40, chance of rain, 80%, rainfall around a quarter of an inch. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back to our coverage of severe weather. We're following very strong storms now in the Little Rock area as well as in Dallas and Fort Worth. And let's begin in Little Rock. There is now a tornado warning just to the north of Little Rock. That in effect for Faulkner, Lone Oak and Pulaski counties until 1130 and seeing a little notch that has developed there uh, now just north of Little Rock. Possible tornado along with that, that little dog leg that has developed there. Uh, but it looks like also certainly a serious damaging wind threat. Uh, that coming towards Cato in just another couple of minutes into Jacksonville at 1102 and then into Lone Oak at 1122. So a damaging wind threat, uh, possible spin up developing along with that. And then these storms are now uh, just about ready to come into Little Rock, moving southeast about 40, 45 miles per hour. So let's track the leading edge of these storms and show you where they're going to be headed uh, as they move uh, towards the southeast coming into Little Rock at about 1101 so about 10 minutes or so uh, then into East End at 1108 and Woodson at about 11 18 uh, damaging wind on the way for you. 60 mile per hour wind is the concern with these storms now. Uh, also warning for wind uh, in Clark and Garland and Hot Spring counties. Uh, could be some one inch hail with that as well. Uh, severe warning here up towards Searcy and then also near Denmark and Tuckerman, Independence, uh, Jackson, White counties, and then a warning for Jonesboro, Arkansas, uh, Clay, Dunklin, and Green counties. Uh, now into Dallas and Fort Worth. We are seeing a warning for uh, Dallas proper. And uh, warning now in effect for Collin, Dallas, and Denton counties going until 1145. We've been watching this little guy here, and it's got a little bit of a swirl to it. A little hard to pick out, but you can see right in there. And this wind surging uh, back in behind there. And uh, we got a report of 70 mile per hour wind to the north of Denton. That is what's going to be coming down and across the Dallas metro. So uh, tracking that out, and let me uh, actually run the loop here real quick. Uh, just to get a good sense of the vector. Uh, that actually looks to be pretty solidly uh, south-southeast. So uh, we'll show you where that's going to be moving in the next few minutes. Coming into Plano here, it looks like, and then down into uh, a University Park about 1113 into downtown Dallas about 1117 and then into Mesquite at about 1128 and we're looking at a threat for some 70 mile per hour wind in these areas. So a significant wind also quarter size hail. But you know when you get into that range you get up to a 70 mile per hour wind you're talking about the potential to bring down some limbs maybe some entire trees uh, certainly power lines as well maybe even some minor structural damage to roofs and so this is going to be a pretty mean storm storm uh, coming down into the Dallas area now moving southeast about 40 miles per hour actually uh, 50 miles per hour so I'm going to redraw this it is speeding up a little bit relative to what it was doing before and I'm going to speed up the uh, the timing of this uh, because it's doing that and so this will be coming into Plano in very short order and then coming down across 635 and then uh, moving into Irving 1104 
uh, Dallas at 11.11, and then coming into Mesquite at 11.21. So again, now moving southeast at 50 miles per hour with a 70, 70 mile per hour wind threat. So please do take the storm very seriously. This is a big deal uh, coming down into downtown Dallas. Uh, to the west now, a little cell has popped up over Fort Worth. It's not being warned on at this time. There's a warning for Jack and Palo Pinto and Parker counties looking at 60 mile per hour wind there and possibly some uh, one inch hail as that drops down and towards I-20. Chris, over to you. All right, Carl, we'll get back to those storms that are bearing down uh, there in Dallas in just a moment. But first, want to give you a heads up if you're planning your day tomorrow in the Big Easy or in the ATL Atlanta and New Orleans uh, facing the potential for at least some heavy rain, but also some thunderstorms for the middle part of the week. Let's take a look at what's going on and how this is all playing out here. Now, not as much energy that we are seeing right now across parts of Texas and Louisiana, but still enough for a little bit of oomph in the atmosphere, if you will, with the southerly winds bringing in a little bit more moisture. Then we look at these southwesterly winds coming in with the winds going at, at a different direction with height the southwesterly at one level and then uh, coming more westerly at another putting in play here the potential that we could have some storms that are rotating or tilted that last a little bit longer and can produce some nastier weather a quick look at the timing here this is mid-morning some showers by early afternoon for the Atlanta metro area by the afternoon things get a little messy then eventually get a little nasty between about five and seven o'clock depending on where you are are in the metro area and this should be out of here before midnight for you in Atlanta. How about New Orleans? It's going to be a mid-morning to early afternoon as things are uh, starting to heat up across North Georgia then eventually during the overnight hours through the Carolinas and even now into portions uh, of Florida as well. Again, this is taking you now into Thursday. So we're looking at this system taking a couple more days to get completely offshore. So on Thursday, Carolinas, parts of Florida in the threat zone here. And you can see right here, severe weather heading to Dallas and Little Rock. Let's take a live look right now at Little Rock with these storms bearing down. We can see even ahead of the worst of the weather coming in, the trees moving around, the sky in the distance lighting up. Storms are on the move for you in Little Rock. 69 degrees right now. Warm enough for storms. We've also been watching the horizon here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This is live right now of Dallas. Just looking here. It's just a matter of time. We are seeing more lightning showing up. Also taking you down the ground. Dry right now, 80 degrees. It's not going to stay that way. Big storm heading your way. Could see winds up to 70 miles an hour. They are the heroes. Severe storm center, you are watching the Weather Channel and we are watching conditions deteriorate in a big way here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Storms are moving in right now as we speak. The lightning is lighting up the sky. The rain is pounding the ground here, pounding the roadways. You can see the leaves on the trees, the branches swaying around. You are now getting in the thick of things right now, the front edge of a pretty nasty looking storm that is moving in. Uh, temperatures right now close to 70 degrees, closer to 80 degrees in Dallas. In fact, it is 80 degrees and these storms are on the horizon. They are heading in. They are moving in from the north northwest right now and a look now from the ground. 80 degrees again here and the, the road is dry. There's some lightning off in the distance. You can see that. Uh, I believe uh, as we look and kind of get a, a lay of the land here, look at that. This camera really doing a good job. The resolution is really, uh, really fine to where when this the lightning happens and the sky lights up, you can really see kind of the, 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 the formation of the clouds. And you get kind of a, a good look at the storms that are approaching generally again from the north coming in with a little bit of a northwesterly tilt. I know, Carl, you're working to get the very latest information on these storms. 70 mile an hour winds looking imminent 
for Dallas with the storms crushing right now into Little Rock. What are you thinking? What's catching your eye at the moment? Well, you know, we've seen this really mean cell that came right down to 35 and in the Denton area. We got some reports of winds to 70 miles per hour. That is now coming down into Dallas County. So that is the most serious cell right now. Uh, also a new warning in effect for Fort Worth, Denton and Tarrant and Wise counties uh, under warning, looking at the possibility of some 60 mile per hour wind. You've got a couple of areas that are coming through now, but you know, the cell that's got me more concerned is the one that's now near Plano, and that's the one that's being warned on for 70 mile per hour wind. As we zoom in a little bit here, uh, we can see the leading edge of that is not very far away from downtown Dallas. And uh, again, we've had a history of some very strong wind with this storm. So as that continues to drive down towards the south southeast, uh, that'll be coming into downtown Dallas uh, not very long from now, probably just about 15 minutes or so. Moving into Irving more immediately uh, about 1108, Mesquite 1122 and Rockwall at about 1123. And again, 70 mile per hour wind is going to be the concern with this storm. I'm going to go ahead and uh, loop this for you so you can get a sense of the vector there, and I think that's basically about it, uh, basically south-southeast. And uh, we're also seeing a pretty good bit of lightning with these storms. Look at that, a heck of a light show, and uh, it's going to be looking rather remarkable. That shot that you see just below me there, uh, that's going to be lit up quite a bit in just a matter of moments as this uh, highly electrical storm comes through. In fact, let's go ahead and check. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, and let's just see just how much lightning there is. You know, it's not surprising at all that we've got all of this lightning because uh, you've got just so much instability, a lot of warm and humid air. Uh, there's a live look at downtown there, and uh, you know, I'm not sure what direction we're looking in. Uh, you know, Chris, you're usually pretty good about directions that way. Carl, uh, I'm, I'm looking at that right now. Give me a moment here. I just okay. identified that building and... But so, you know, as we look at the lightning here, you know, we're looking at all of the cells that are now coming down into the uh, Dallas uh, Fort Worth Metroplex, we've got uh, now nearly 900 lightning strikes. So that's stretching from just outside of Greenville uh, across the north side uh, of Dallas into Fort Worth and then back out towards Weatherford as well. Nearly uh, 900 strikes that just changed now to 700. Uh, so you see this sort of doing this in real time. Uh, let's just take this one that's coming into Dallas. That's the one we're going to focus on uh, in the next few minutes. And just that little section right there is probably producing really significant lightning. There, wow, look at that. That is 500 strikes now coming right into the north side of Dallas. So that picture is going to change really radically in just a few minutes here. This is now moving southeast at 50 miles per hour. And in addition to that light show that's coming in, we're going to be looking at a significant wind threat. Uh, we could be talking about uh, 60 to 70 mile per hour wind. The wind generally has not been as high as it was on the north side of the metro up around Denton is where we saw this really pronounced uh, wind signature there and winds of 70 miles per hour reported, measured. Uh, now they're down to about 60 miles per hour, but we still could see some 70 mile per hour wind. But the upshot here is that these are some some very serious storms uh, that are now coming through. And, and Chris, did you get a, a sense of the direction yeah, on you, the camera? You know what? Uh, what I'm thinking is we are looking just about due. I think the green building right there, I believe that's the Bank of America Plaza building there. We're looking downtown Dallas here and it's off to the left would be northwest. So we're looking mm. right at these storms like head on. On wow. just about as they are moving in right now. So we're looking out, I believe, uh, over the uh, historical part of, of Dallas, if you've been to the area near the convention center, kind of in, in that part, the southern part of Dallas. So we're looking over uh, the... Uh, the heart of Dallas and kind of the same vantage point. My guess is this is just on the south side of the Trinity River, this vantage point. Yeah, and this is also looking north. So I, I think my... Uh, my guess is right that when we look at the uh, the Bank of America, America Plaza building there, the, the green one with the green lights, that's looking more of a northwesterly direction. So this would be so that's more northwest off to the left, and off to the right would be a more northerly direction here. So we're watching these storms moving right in, Carl. Yeah, coming right into the, the heart of Dallas there, and uh, you know again we're talking about a tremendous electrical storm. Look at that. Uh, you can see it being lit up there. It's not very far away from downtown Dallas. In fact, I'm gonna measure uh, sort of the heart of this lightning. 
and looks like it's about 15 miles away uh, now from uh, Dallas and moving at 50 miles per hour. So you can do the math there. It's going to be moving in in a very short order, not long at all, maybe uh, 10, uh, 20 minutes, uh, somewhere in the order of that. In fact, let me go ahead and just time out the leading edge of all of this as it moves southeast and uh, coming down into Dallas about 1117 or so. So you're talking about, uh, again, about 10 minutes, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, 12 minutes coming into downtown Dallas before we get walloped with a terrific amount of wind and lightning. And that's going to be the primary threat uh, with these storms. There could be some hail as well, but it's mostly going to be a wind and a hail threat. Uh, looking at possibly some quarter size hail, but 70 mile per hour wind gusts will be the worry as this drops down and into the Dallas area. So, you know, again, we'll come back to this in just a few minutes because that's going to be a radically different picture there uh, not very long from now. Uh, now, taking it farther north uh, up into Little Rock, we had been watching a tornado warning here that has uh, been allowed to expire. Now a severe thunderstorm warning for Lone Oak and Pulaski and Saline County. So that's now coming through Little Rock. Uh, some very strong winds have just blasted through, as you can see. Well, this is always kind of fun to watch when you see it's uh, that green and blue color coming towards the radar, and then it's the uh, yellowish and orangish color moving away from the radar. Uh, there's a live look, by the way, uh, at Little Rock, and you see the heavy rain coming down now. So it's going to be a little rough for the next, uh, say, 10 to 15 minutes, but uh, it looks like the, the leading edge now being beyond you, uh, things are probably going to be improving, save for the fact that, uh, again, you've got uh, a lot of lightning here. That's been a real hallmark of all of these storms and, and not a big surprise given the amount of instability that we've been talking about. It's just a very, very unstable atmosphere, which lends itself to very tall clouds. When you've got really tall clouds, more of the cloud is up into the area where you get ice particles, and that's a big part of what uh, helps to drive that lightning threat. So you've got quite a bit of lightning coming through Little Rock right now uh, as well as well as into uh, Hot Springs. And we just got a report of a 36, uh, excuse me, a 46 mile per hour wind gust uh, coming into Little Rock. So uh, certainly a wind threat as well. And an ongoing severe warning there for Little Rock at points uh, further east. There you see the, the latest on that. Leading edge, as I mentioned, uh, now just through Little Rock and continuing off to the southeast. So I'm gonna track that for you very quickly as that moves uh, to the southeast rapidly coming into Pettis at 11.18, England at 11.23, Coy at 11.30, and Hazen at 11.31. Uh, now, north of that, uh, other warnings to tell you about. Prairie White Woodruff under warning for wind and some one-inch hail. And then also west of Memphis, Crittenden and Cross and Poinsett counties under warning. Uh, I've got a, just a little uh, thin line there, and then another one that's going to be coming through. So eventually that'll be moving towards Memphis. Uh, then here in Texarkana, I wanted to show you this because this area of storms also really means business. Uh, Bowie, Little River, McCurtain counties under warning for 70 mile per hour wind. So let's time that out and see when that's going to be getting. It's not very far away from Texarkana. It's just going to be a matter of moments before that gets into Texarkana. Uh, coming down across uh, Route 30 there, Interstate 30, I should say. Uh, moving into Texarkana about 1129. So you've got about 20 minutes or so before some exceptionally strong wind comes your way. And that's really going to be the biggest part of what we're facing going forward. It's mostly going to be a straight line wind threat. There may yet be some tornado warnings. Certainly there could be some large hail, especially in Texas. But that's the, the biggest part of it is a damaging wind threat uh, going forward. And you see the severe thunderstorm watches there that are in effect. And I also want to show you the instability because this is an important part of this story. You know, you can think of instability as, as fuel for thunderstorms. And so, you know, as we watch these storms up here on the north side near Memphis, look what's happening with the instability. Uh, they're just about ready to run out of gas there. They're about ready to run into areas where there's not as much instability. In fact, you know, you notice those cells that were west of Memphis were starting to look a little uh, thin. They weren't quite as robust. So that's not a surprise given what we're seeing with the fuel. And you see that there is some here certainly in, uh, near Little Rock, but it doesn't last much longer than that. However, you look down here in Texas, and I mean, it's just off the charts. I mean, you, you've got tremendous, you know, very high-end instability there in Texas, which tells you that that part of the line is going to keep going for a very, very long time. That's a big part of why 
we expect to see this threat uh, going until the morning, as a matter of fact. Uh, right down 35, right down 45, right into uh, Colleen and Waco, into Huntsville, and into Houston as well. And in fact, making its way to the Gulf Coast around the time the sun comes up tomorrow morning. Uh, still some very strong storms and a damaging wind potential coming through those areas. Chris, over to you. And looking at that, Carl, it's also interesting to see that the instability is building in some parts of Texas and western Louisiana. Meanwhile, here in Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, this is the scene. The storms have been coming through. The lightning still on the horizon. The winds not as strong as they were just moments ago, but the lightning still as furious. The roads are swamped in some cases. You can see these cars going along the rooster tails uh, behind the cars. The, the camera itself, the lens cover absolutely soaked. Heavy rain still happening here. And when you look at a scene like this, this is what you have heading your way. In fact, it's going to be worse than this in Dallas here in a matter of moments. 68 degrees right now in Arkansas. Uh, there in Little Rock, it is still close to 80 degrees. You see here on the horizon, the skyline beyond, beyond that, beyond downtown Dallas and off to the left. We're looking north, so off to the left, uh, Fort Worth uh, out there. It's off camera. It's way off there where that the, the lightning is going off to the left. And uh, here to the north, you can see uh, how the lightning is uh, illuminating the sky in the sense that we can see the, the clouds from time to time. But boy, this is going to be a different scene. Uh, both cameras we are tracking right now. This is still looking mainly to the north, but you can imagine uh, where it says Dallas in 79. Uh, that is uh, a little bit more in a northwesterly direction and a little bit more to the left. You head out to the Fort Worth area. Both areas right now, Dallas and Fort Worth, both under severe thunderstorm warnings at the moment. Strong storm is bearing down on you right now. In fact, the northern suburbs of the Dallas metro area right now are uh, getting rocked, and you can see the lightning is frequent. And, and all, I don't know, Carl, if you're seeing this too, but you look at the horizon and you see the lights there on the ground. Uh, I'm mm. starting to, to think that maybe that line is actually approaching and we're seeing fewer lights, how the, the heavy rain will obscure the lights as I'm mm. staring at the lights off to the left. And, I, I, and it might be my imagination, I'm not sure, but I think that we can actually see that fuzzy nature of the camera, which is making me think that maybe the, the rain shaft is getting a little bit closer Airway. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right about that. In fact, you can actually see the, the cloud base there as it's getting a little bit closer. And the, the area that is illuminated underneath, that's that uh, big rain, heavy rain core. It's not very far away right now. I mean, it's just now coming. Uh, it's just now coming into 635. So knocking on the door there in University Park. I mean, relative to this downtown area, the leading edge of the heaviest rain is now eight miles away and moving southeast at about 50 miles per hour. So you're talking about, you know, being around 10 minutes uh, away, uh, probably at the most here, uh, coming into downtown Dallas. There you see the, the leading edge right there. And certainly there's going to be a, a pretty serious uh, damaging wind threat. I think the greater threat for strong winds is a little farther north, a little bit of a, a rear inflow uh, notch right in there, showing us some potential for some strong wind uh, coming down across Route 75 there. But uh, all the way around, there could be wind. You, you notice the, the sort of bowing shape there near Garland as well. Uh, I'd be very concerned about some strong wind in that area in particular, more so than in areas that are farther west. Uh, but this uh, now moving down into Garland about 1114, uh, coming into Rockwell at 1121, and coming into Dallas about 1122 or so. And as we've said, uh, there is quite a bit of lightning showing up. I mean, look at that. That is something that has actually gotten more pronounced in just the last few minutes since we've been watching that. Uh, and sure enough, 588 strikes with just that segment that is coming into Dallas right now. We'll have much more on this in just a few minutes.
tonight. Cloudy with periods of rain. Low 54. Rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Wednesday. Cloudy with periods of rain. High 57. Rainfall near a half an inch. Wednesday night. Rain. Low 40. Chance of rain 80%. Rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Here's our seven day outlook. This severe storm center, you're watching the Weather Channel. New picture just into the Weather Channel showing what the strong winds can do, bringing down this tree in Conway, Arkansas. That's north of Little Rock, and fortunately, no one hurt. No structural damage either, but it shows you the strength of just some of the, the winds that we're dealing with, with this line of storms that have been working through parts of Arkansas and through portions of Texas. I want to go back to storm specialist Carl Parker as these storms are bearing down on Dallas. Yeah, Chris, and uh, we're driving right into uh, downtown Dallas here. And, uh, you know, the one thing that really stands out, of course, is the lack of activity uh, related to this uh, great national crisis that we've all been going through. And, and, you know, so that's the good thing when it comes to severe weather. Everybody's uh, pretty much in place. Uh, these storms are going to produce some potentially very strong wind, uh, 60, maybe 70 mile per hour wind, a lot of lightning coming through as well. You're just getting a little bit of a sense for that. And there's an, a larger uh, sort of a broader view. And you can see that line that's uh, that, that's now getting ready to come in. And there is an ongoing severe thunderstorm warning for just about the entire metro. Uh, Dallas under warning right now for potential 70 mile per hour wind as well as one inch hail. Fort Worth under warning right now for 60 mile per hour wind and one inch hail. There you go. Denton, Tarrant and Wise counties. Uh, that's the warning until 1145. We've got sort of a broken uh, line that's coming through one initial area and then another cell that is behind that. Uh, the one that's now moving through Dallas uh, does not appear to be quite as strong in the area that is coming right through downtown as it is farther northeast. Uh, that little surge right there is where I think we're probably maximizing the wind as it comes towards Interstate 30. And that's just from, say, d downtown, uh, just northeast. That's where I think we're going to be getting in on some of the stronger wind, uh, Rockwell as well as Heath and also, also Mesquite. Uh, those areas are uh, getting in on some pretty strong wind. But uh, as we mentioned, it's just knocking on the door now. It's just about on top of Dallas, and you can see all the lightning here as well. Uh, that is the real-time lightning there, and so there's quite a bit of it. Uh, let's look at the trend over the last few minutes, and it's just holding steady. So, you know, a huge light show coming through along with some very strong wind. Uh, you see the live camera there, and in a matter of just moments, uh, this is going to be a, a really radically different uh, scenario. It's going to be extremely wet and windy, and we're going to see a heck of a light show coming through for probably about uh, 15 or 20 minutes or so. But uh, again, everybody uh, safely ensconced uh, in their homes for the most part. And so, uh, you know, it's probably not going to be a, an enormous impact for the Dallas area, but there certainly could be some tree limbs down. There could be some power lines down, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, as always, lightning is is very dangerous. So make sure you take the, the proper precautions there. Uh, I want to show you also some other areas that we're watching. One is in northeast Texas and a very vigorous line now dropping down into Texarkana. So there is a warning for Bowie and Little River and McCurtain counties for potentially 70 mile per hour wind. I'm going to time that out for you. That is just about on top of Texarkana as well as uh, into Hope and uh, coming down pretty quickly, about 40, 40 miles per hour, 40, 50 miles per hour. Let me get a sense of the uh, motion here. I'll get a read out of the motion, I should say, uh, and the 45 miles per hour. So right in between those two. And uh, that's going to be coming into Texarkana at 1132 and into Cookville at 1151. So heads up for some damaging wind uh, coming your way. Again, 70 mile per hour wind is the threat here. I was going to look at the velocity data, but uh, for whatever reason, the radar is uh, not functioning quite normally uh, in that area. 
Uh, then also into Arkansas, several warnings here, one of those for Little Rock, uh, another one uh, farther south for Clark, Dallas, and Hot Spring County. Uh, here you can see that strong wind that's coming through. Look at that little surge right there that's getting ready to come into Hamilton. Let's query that because that's going to mean some business. That's a 72 mile per hour outbound velocity uh, just about ready to slam into Hamilton. So heads up for some strong wind there. Uh, also some strong wind just to the west of England. So uh, another area to keep uh, an eye on. Uh, and then we, we see even more of that getting up into the northeast part of the state. Uh, warning for Prairie and White and Woodruff and a warning just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. But uh, I talked about this moments ago. Something else I want to show you is what's going on with the instability with these storms. This is the fuel for the thunderstorms. And you notice that on the northeast end of this line, uh, that the instability there in red, what is sort of requisite for severe storms, is uh, just about gone. So that part of the line is going to begin to weaken as it moves, say, towards Paducah and across the Mississippi River near Memphis, which is not to say there won't still be some wind. It's just not going to be quite as profound. But then farther south, uh, more towards Texas, you see there's just a huge amount of instability, and that's where things are going to be going for quite a while yet. Chris, over to you. All right, Carl, we want to go back now and take a look at live look now at downtown Dallas here. The Historic portion of Dallas downtown and looking around, you don't see anybody on the streets. The streets are dry right now. That's going to change and that's going to change in a big way because of what is on the horizon. If you're getting a hint, the flashes in the distance, lightning illuminating the sky from time to time. And you can see uh, what appears to be the leading edge of the clouds that are engulfing the uh, northern part of the city, bringing with it a ton of lightning and a whole heck of a lot of rain and the potential, too, for some very strong winds. It's just a matter of minutes now before the storms going to be rolling in here to downtown Dallas. Tracking this here from this tower cam, also from the ground and on the radar. Stay with the Weather Channel. Truly the scariest moment of my life. Don't miss the premieres of World's Deadliest Weather and Deadline to Disaster, Sunday night, only on the Weather Channel. Right now here on the Weather Channel, tracking severe weather, possibly dangerous weather across uh, parts uh, of the U.S., including here in Arkansas. This is not too far away from Little Rock, and we have been in the thick of things right here as these storms have been absolutely uh, rocking the area with a lot of lightning, some very heavy rain that continues to pound this portion of Arkansas as we are watching this line of storms that stretches from Texas through Arkansas all the way up to Missouri. And it has more states to traverse before it is done. And we have a long night on the way for parts of Arkansas and here in Texas. And here we go. The rain has reached here in Dallas, and it has cooled off quite a bit. It was 80 degrees uh, probably about a half an hour ago. It's now 75, and we're seeing the lightning and the heavy rain that is rolling in right now through downtown. This would be uh, on the radar, the yellows getting into the oranges and the reds. And there goes our visibility, and this is what it looks like on the ground. Notice the rain coming in sideways from this vantage point. We had dry streets just a few moments ago, and nothing convenient about this right here with this kind of rain and wind coming down. You see the windshield wipers uh, going as fast as they can. There's emergency personnel out there, law enforcement, uh, crews in the streets, it appears, and... This is, you see that it's almost like sheets of rain coming down, where it looks like it's coming in waves. Uh, seeing some of the uh, heaviest rain so far here uh, as it uh, is just getting started. So you're getting some of the heaviest rain pretty much right off the bat with the leading edge of this storm. And you can barely make out, if the buildings are completely lit up and outlined in blue or green lights, it's really hard to make sense of what we're looking at here in downtown Dallas. Again, this is the uh, historic uh, portion of uh, downtown Dallas, the uh, area here right uh, just north of where 
uh, Interstate 30 is and 345. We're talking downtown here, and you can see uh, you can see the building right there, uh, the Bank of America Plaza building right there, the green outlined uh, on the left uh, from the uh, air from another tall building, and then on the ground a storm tracker driving around. So you can see the. to the other uh, so we're seeing also you see the splashes how quickly the water comes down or the the rain collects uh, as puddles and a lot of water and this is such heavy rain the windshield wipers just not able to keep up and I think uh, probably a good bet here is to follow the cops right it's follow the police officers here kind of a, like a, an impromptu escort around downtown as we're cruising the streets here of Dallas, trying to give you an idea of what it's like to see some of the heaviest rain. Now, we're looking, you know, here at, at buildings and at sturdy structures, but you can imagine if you're in a rural area away from uh, protected areas like this, we'd like to be seeing the trees swaying around quite a bit. And the other thing, too, that's missing, Carl, as we look at this, is the sound, right? You would have the mm. heavy rain pelting the vehicles here and the windshield wipers squeaking as they're going as fast and furious as they can side to side here. But we're in it right now, aren't we? Yeah, we are, you know, and it strikes me. I mean, I noticed there was a, the, a hotel there uh, just off to the right. This looks like it's, uh, you know, an area that would probably be pretty busy on, you know, a, on an average night. Uh, right in the heart of Dallas, and boy, it's just as, as quiet as can be, you know, given all that's that's been happening in the last couple of months here. But uh, uh, people uh, most likely safely ensconced in their homes, and uh, that's just as well because we've got a nasty line of storms now coming through. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into some of these. The newest warning here in the metro area, Hood and Johnson and Parker counties, that warning until 1230 could be some uh, large hail here, uh, half dollar size hail, and also damaging wind uh, ongoing warning in Dallas and we had uh, a wind we've been talking about this big surge you can see how there's sort of a, a backward C shape uh, showing up right in there it's a big bow that actually just missed downtown Dallas the worst of the the wind and the rain and lightning coming through now but that is the area where we've seen some very strong wind in fact there's a brand new warning that has just come out I'm going to get the latest on that for you uh, warning now for 65 mile per hour winds and let's see uh, what this is for that includes uh, uh, that's hunt and Kaufman and Van Zant counties and again uh, this area right there that bow echo is the one that's been the most prolific in terms of producing wind we got a report of a 78 mile per hour wind gust in Plano that is a terrific amount of wind uh, when you get to that level you're definitely talking about bringing down some uh, trees and tree limbs and so the leading edge of that bow is now just about ready to come into Terrell there and uh, towards Wills Point as well, Crandall and all of those areas. Heads up, you've got a really mean windstorm on the way. That's where the worst of the wind in the Dallas area is right now and moving off to the southeast at about 50 miles per hour. Uh, and then off to the west of that, uh, strong storms coming right through downtown Dallas with heavy rain and a lot of lightning. And we're going to talk much more about all this on the other side. Wow, that's Ensure Max Protein with high protein and one gram sugar. It's a sit up and an abend of the waist. I'm trying. Keep it up. You'll get there. Whoa! 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure Max Protein. Duracell Optimum will be right where you need them today, tomorrow, the day after that, and the day after that, day after day. Packaging designed to make storage easier. Duracell Optimum. Dream hard, work fierce, forge wild. Duluth Trading Firehose Pants, forge your way. Got it? Got it. It's slippery. Bounty picks up messes quicker and is two times more absorbent than the leading ordinary brand. Hey, look. I got it. 
Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. There is nothing love can't do. Love is strong, beautiful. Love makes us rise and heal and overcome. There's nothing that love can't do. Our love is a diamond. If you found your true love, let's find the right ring at Zales.com. Get zero down special financing on the diamond credit card on purchases of $300 or more. Zales, the diamond store. It's the 610 woke up like this migraine medicine. The 340 mid-shift migraine medicine. Introducing Ubrel V. It's the migraine medicine for any time, anywhere a migraine attacks without worrying if it's too late or where you happen to be. One dose of Ubrel V can quickly stop a migraine in a... mornings, you need to know what weather is heading your way. Wake up watching AMHQ. Weekday mornings on the Weather Channel. Welcome back to our coverage of severe storms. We're following a really active line of storms with primarily a damaging wind threat coming into North Texas across parts of Arkansas right now, just about ready to move into northwestern Louisiana and also uh, coming up towards Memphis, Tennessee. The, the northeast part of this line, as you get more towards, say, the Ohio Valley and Paducah, uh, that part of the line is going to run out of gas because we're just not going to have enough instability. But farther south, the instability is going to keep the storm going all night long as they uh, drop down the 35 and 45 corridor into Houston and come down into Louisiana as well. And let's begin in uh, North Texas and Dallas where we've got strong storms uh, now coming right through the Metroplex Hood Johnson Parker counties under warning for hail and high wind. Got an ongoing warning in uh, downtown Dallas for wind and you can see the leading edge of the storms uh, now coming through here. The worst part of the storm and you can really see it, it really stands out, uh, actually came through Plano. You can see the sort of a backward C shape right in there that's coming towards Terrell. Uh, that's where we could be talking about some 65 to 70 mile per hour wind. There was a report of a 78 mile per hour wind in Plano as that came through. So that's the most dangerous part of the storms that are coming through the Dallas area right now. And in fact, there is a warning uh, uh, just off of the southeast. And man, just a lot of lightning here. Look at this uh, in the Dallas area uh, now. 700 strikes in just the last 15 minutes. So highly electrical storm coming through. And in fact, uh, you see in the live camera there, uh, just below me, you can see how the, the sky is just lit up. Uh, that's the way it's going to look for a while. Next uh, 15, 20 minutes, it's going to be probably nonstop lightning there in downtown Dallas. So, you know, as always, uh, make sure you take precautions and stay away from uh, corded things uh, like uh, computers. Uh, as so we've got, uh, again, a highly electrical storm now coming through. There you see uh, just how broad that area of weather is. Uh, lightning flashing all across the sky there as we look towards the northwest and just past uh, downtown Dallas. So again, very strong wind uh, east of town. Hunt, Kaufman, Van Zant counties under warning until 1230 for possible 65 mile per hour wind. I'm going to go ahead and track that forward because that is, I mentioned, the most dangerous part of the storms that are now coming through the area. Uh, that is now that, in fact, the apex of that bow is coming into Terrell right now. So I would imagine we're going to be seeing some really strong wind there uh, right now. Uh, then beyond that, uh, heads up in Ola as well as Kaufman and in Wills Point for some damaging wind to come through. Then well off to the southwest, got a threat for some large hail here. That is uh, Comanche and Eastland counties under warning until 1230. Looking at the potential for some two-inch hail that is larger than uh, golf ball size hail and reported egg size hail there along with that cell. Uh, then up into the Arklatex, a couple of warnings to tell you about in this area. Uh, I've got a warning for Mount Pleasant and uh, around I-30 there. Cass, Morris and Titus for 60 mile per hour wind. And then a warning for um, areas just southeast of Hope, Hempstead, Lafayette, and Nevada counties going until 1215 for 70 mile per hour wind. And again, we're seeing one of these sort of Boeing structures. And whenever you see that, that sort of Boeing shape there, uh, that's when you get concerned about the possibility of some really strong wind. That coming towards Bodka, towards Stamps, as well as Magnolia and all of those areas, uh, heads up for some exceptionally strong straight line wind to come through. 
Then up into Arkansas, we've got uh, more severe warnings here. Uh, one of those into Pine Bluff, and uh, that's just about ready to come into Pine Bluff. You see the strong wind showing up in the, the orange and yellowish color there. And then more storms uh, farther northeast, getting up into northeast Arkansas and just outside of Memphis. But uh, interesting part to this story, uh, you see the instability, what is required for thunderstorms to keep going, the fuel essentially. And you see how we're starting to run to the edge of that instability tongue in the northeast part of this line. So you can envision here this, and you can see it already, as a matter of fact. Notice how these storms near Paducah, west of Paducah, they got to that edge there of that fuel, and they are now starting to collapse. They're beginning to fall apart because they're running out of gas. We're going to see something similar for some of these storms that are moving uh, farther east uh, into western Tennessee. But farther south, I mean, look at that, just an unlimited supply of instability of fuel for the storms in Texas. And that's why, Chris, uh, they're going to keep going all night long and press all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Over to you. And Carl, as we uh, take a look now at Richardson, Texas, uh, where you can actually see some of the clouds uh, on the horizon, and boy, oh boy, what a sight this is. You can actually see some of the uh, lightning bolts themselves here uh, with this weather stem camera here, again, in Richardson, Texas. And you look at this, and you can see it looks like the intracloud lightning, so the lightning is not necessarily getting all the way to the ground. And then uh, every once in a while, you'll just uh, see the whole sky illuminated by lightning that may be a little bit closer here. Uh, certainly, as Carl mentioned, an electric. Uh, well, look, did you see that? Wow. Carl, as you're looking at this, does anything jump out at you other than the fact that it's just confirming what we're seeing with what you've been showing us with all of the lightning associated with these storms? Uh, I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> to be honest with you, I mean, I, you know, I, I love, yeah, I obviously want to be safe in a, in a situation like this, but if you can watch this, uh, you know, indoors and, and, you know, generally stay a little bit away from the windows, uh, you know, I love this kind of thing. I really do. I think it's just, it, there's so much power there. You see the whole sky lit up like that. It's remarkable. Yeah, it absolutely is uh, remarkable. It's a magnificent display. Unfortunately, living through it is different when you don't have power across parts of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Uh, we're hearing that more than 73,000 customers without power. These powerful storms still rolling on through the night. Now, there just went a house. The roof just hit off. When that came down, I yelled, I don't want to drown in the storm. Guys, we've got cars floating again. Oh, my God. Truly, it was the scariest moment of my life. Don't miss the premieres of World's Deadliest Weather and Deadline to Disaster, Sunday night, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 62 degrees with light rain. Tonight, cloudy with periods of rain, low 54, rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Wednesday, cloudy with periods of rain, high 57, rainfall near a half an inch. Wednesday night, rain, low 40, chance of rain 80%, rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Here's our seven day outlook. This is Severe Storm Central. You're watching the Weather Channel. We are watching the skies light up live right here in Texas, in Richardson, Texas right now. We are seeing a magnificent display of some strong storms that have been rolling through Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, here in Texas, now in Texas. Going to be moving through the state of Louisiana, much of the south. It's going to be a long night. And into Tennessee, not too far away from Memphis at the moment. But again, Carl, as we look at this, uh, this camera, this weather stem camera, uh, oftentimes with some of the cameras we see at night, it's tough. I mean, technology nowadays is getting better and better. But here we can even see the clouds when the lightning isn't going. 
and then occasionally we really get a good outline of the clouds and a feel for what's going on. And then we'll see, Carl, some bolts going across the sky, which is an absolutely magnificent display. Oh, it, it really is an amazing thing. You know, I've always been fascinated by lightning, you know, maybe a, a lot more so than most people. I, I remember years ago, I went up to, to visit Ottumwa, Iowa, and I saw something like this. It was, the, you know, anvil crawlers that were reaching across the sky. It was, you know, after a wedding reception, and I, and I was staring out at the sky and, and just standing there in front of the reception, just looking up into the sky, and it was slack-jawed. I just could not believe what I was looking at. And all of these Iowans kept walking past me going, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's standard fare in Iowa. You know, you're used to it. And, I, you know, I'm sure the same could be said for, wow, oh. look at that. Wow. See, I love this kind of stuff. I really do. I know it's, you know, very dangerous and you got to be careful and all that. But I do really, really enjoy shows like this. And you, you just don't get them. You know, I've said many, many times, Chris, that uh, storms that occur in the plains are really different animals. It's just not the same thing that you see in the East Coast. Hey, hey Carl, it's funny you say that. I was at a wedding also in Kansas City and a similar thing with some storms rolling through. Meanwhile, here, uh, Dallas, we are still seeing the skies lighting up. The flashes here, uh, looking beyond oh. the downtown historic district here and then on the ground, <sighs> another view, Carl, look at that. <laughs> that is amazing. You know, just such electrical storms that we were looking, you know, just in the Dallas area alone, tracking about 700 strikes uh, in the last 15 minutes. So, you know, this is just that one of those situations where it's nearly constant lightning. And again, it, you know, it's, you know, maybe not that unusual or, or that notable for people that, that live here. But certainly, you know, if you're from other parts of the country, it's just a remarkable thing. It's an incredible thing to see that kind of of a light show when it's just constant like that and, and lighting up everything around. And, and I think it's also interesting when you kind of step back and you close your eyes and you think about what's causing this. The atmosphere is so primed to rise. And, and yeah. Sarah was saying that some of these cloud tops are uh, up around 55,000 feet. Yeah. That's a lot of vertical uh, emotion, a lot of separation of charges that it's really hard to get your mind around it until you see the display, the result of this uh, magnificent and complicated uh, feat that Mother Nature puts on right before our eyes. Yeah, you know, this is, uh, as you mentioned, uh, really a function of the amount of instability. We've been talking about the fact that, that even as the instability is dropping off much farther north up into Kentucky and into Tennessee, uh, the instability is just really, really high in Texas, and that's going to keep these storms going all night long. And, and right, as you say, when you've got really high instability, you get really tall clouds, and with really tall clouds, a significant part of the cloud is above what we call the freezing level, and the formation of ice is what leads to that charge separation and leads you to, to get more uh, lightning like this. So it's, it's directly a function of the, the available fuel, the available energy for these storms, and uh, we'll expect to see this kind of thing going all night long like this, uh, right, marching right down 35 and down 45. And, and what we're looking at right now is uh, not too far away. We're north of Dallas here in Richardson, Texas. So we might be seeing some of the same flashes. Uh, and in this case, uh, maybe a little bit closer to some of the flashes. The streaks, Carl, here are fantastic. They really are. Uh, it really is something. And, and you know, as I mentioned, the, the instability is, is really, really high uh, all the way down to the Gulf Coast. And so this is why we think this section of storms is going to keep going for a very, very long time. It's going to drive right down into the Piney Woods there. It's going to drive down 35 and 45 and into Houston. And it's going to wake you up in Houston, most likely in the very early morning hours, you know, probably somewhere around uh, 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning on the north side of the metro oh, and then uh, continuing down uh, towards the south side of the metro and out into the Gulf Coast there uh, by the time the sun starts coming up. But uh, it's going to be a long night in Texas. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and uh, Sarah pulled up a, a satellite here to remind us of the explosive nature, too, 
uh, of these storms, the way they just uh, developed and exploded throughout the day over Oklahoma and over Missouri, and then eventually uh, rocked through Arkansas. And you can see that right here, Carl. Uh, this is the enhanced satellite, the infrared satellite. We assign uh, different colors to uh, different temperatures, and the colder the temperature, the higher the cloud. So you can kind of get the uh, vertical sense of the bubbling nature of this, Carl. Yep, amazing night. And uh, as we mentioned, it's going to keep going for quite some time, and we're going to be here covering these storms uh, right through the night, Chris. All right, stay with the Weather Channel. This is Severe Storm Central. The threat continues tonight and into tomorrow. Buick and GMC. Back to our coverage of severe storms and an incredible lightning show in Dallas tonight. Uh, storms coming through producing 78 mile per hour wind in Plano. The worst of that weather is now coming right through downtown Dallas. A huge lightning show. It's going to be going on for a while, but now the worst of the storms on the south side of the metro and continuing to move east. And so uh, here you see the lightning as we look at the entire metro. That is 12. 1,251 strikes in the last 15 minutes. An incredible light show. Uh, very dangerous storms. Uh, ongoing warning here for Hood and Johnson and Parker counties as well as uh, Dallas County and uh, points farther south, uh, Tarrant County, Ellis County. And then here is the big bow that produced the 78 mile per hour wind. Hunt, Kaufman, Van Zandt counties. Uh, that is now coming down Interstate 20 and towards Canton and eventually Gun Barrel City as well. So expect to see some very strong wind along with that. Uh, looking at the instability, this is what is driving these storms, the fuel for the storms. You notice how it's starting to run out here in the northeast part of the line, but that's not the case at all in Texas. This is where the storms are going to be going for quite some time yet, uh, dropping right down through east Texas and eventually into Houston as well into tomorrow morning. Uh, once again, uh, tremendous uh, activity all along this line and strong storms now coming towards Shreveport as well. Uh, there your live look at Dallas with the ongoing lightning and we will continue our coverage as necessary throughout the night right here on the Weather Channel.